we live? Yes, we are live now. Okay, welcome everybody. I will uh, have staff start the meeting by asking the interpreters to introduce themselves in English and uh, the interpreting language. Give us one minute. Hello, good morning. My name is Brenda Lopez. I'll be a Spanish interpreter. Hello, buenos días. Mi nombre es Brenda Lopez. Seré la intérprete de español. Thank you. Uh, we'll now call this meeting to order. I now call to order the first virtual town hall. We have over 250 people registered to speak, so we'll get started right away. A great testament to the energy and commitment of our public. Staff will describe the format of the meeting. There's a transcriptionist who will be recording every word. Please speak slowly and clearly so we have a clear record of your input. At this time, the commissioners will introduce ourselves. My name is Erica Newberg. I'm the chairwoman and I live in Chandler. Uh, please, Commissioner Meal. Um, David Meal and I am, live in Pima County in Tucson. Commissioner Lerner. Is Shireen Lerner and I live in Maricopa County. And good morning. Good morning. This is Vice Chair Derek Watchman. I represent Apache County, and I'm from Winderock, Arizona. Good morning. We also have Commissioner York, who is from Maricopa County, on with us as well. We're just trying to get him uh, registered as a panelist, so. So he could be shown uh, in the tile, but he is active and listening. Welcome commissioners and welcome public. We'll now move to agenda item two, which is public comment. Staff will now describe the format of the meeting and read the rules. My name is Lori Van Heeren. I'm the deputy director of the IRC. We have approximately 247 people who registered to speak. Anybody who was registered by 9 a.m. will be given the opportunity to speak. We will try to take a break every 90 minutes. When your name is called, you will be sent a request to unmute yourself. Three speakers at a time will be unmuted. Please do not begin speaking until your name is called. In the chat box, we have already started listing the names of the next 10 speakers. We will start with those speakers who are uh, talking about uh, Eastern Arizona, then Western Arizona, then Metro Phoenix, Southern Arizona, and then Northern Arizona. You must be signed in under the name you registered in order to speak, or we will not be able to find you and unmute you. In compliance with Arizona's open meeting laws, speakers should confine their statements to the issue on the posted agenda, which is before the commission. Speakers are also requested to limit their comments to approximately two minutes. The two minutes will be strictly enforced for all speakers. Additionally, speakers are required to follow proper decorum. Speakers must use appropriate language. Foul and or abusive language will not be tolerated. Any speaker failing to follow proper decorum or any other guidelines may be asked to leave. Any breach of the peace or disruption of a commission public hearing may be cause of report to law enforcement. If someone has already expressed the same sentiment you wish to express, you may say so and your comments will be recorded. Opposing viewpoints may be expressed by the citizens present. As a courtesy, citizens are reminded to address their comments to the chair and to the commission and not to the audience present. Please show respect for all speakers and avoid personal comments. Remember, the commission must hear all sides of an issue in order to make an informed decision. We will now begin public comment. Again, there is an interpreter in Spanish present. If anyone needs a Spanish interpreter, please indicate so when your name is called. Si alguien necesita un interprete, por favor, consulte un miembro de nuestro personal. Gracias. We will start now by reading the first three names and unmuting the speakers. If the speakers are not present, we will try to come back. The first three names are Kathy Lee, Jerry Michaels, and Jesse Bryant. And I just wanna interject and let the public know and everybody participating, we will be taking a break every 90 minutes uh, for the transcriptionists uh, to be able to you know, catch up with us. So just be prepared for those interruptions. Uh, thank you.
thing, none of the first three speakers, we're going to move to Lori Gray, Greg Blair, and Tempest Shires. I apologize, Chairwoman. I don't. I think when Mark uh, shared his screen, it kicked me off. Uh, so the next three speakers I called were Lori, Lori Gray, Greg Blair, and Tempest Shires. And, and I did see that uh, somebody in the chat box said, "I'm here, but I can't unmute Greg Blair." Okay, Mr. Uh, Blair, I will unmute you now. Called that cannot un unmute. They're identifying themselves in the chat. Mr. Blair, Mr. Blair. your two minutes is starting now. Uh, hello, uh, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak on behalf of my community. Uh, my name is Greg Blair. I live in Maricopa County, uh, North Scottsdale, just south of the 101. And I'm here to, today to provide you some insights into uh, my community of interest. Um, I live in North, uh, I live off North Scottsdale Road and Princess Drive. My community is made up of professionals and ret retirees that live and work in offices adjacent to the 101 and along Scottsdale Road. Uh, we have many people who also commute and work in central Scottsdale. Uh, we gather and support restaurants, arts, entertainment, shopping, uh, and venues along Scottsdale Road and businesses along the 101. We rarely travel west of Scottsdale Road or south into Tempe, and we mainly live, worship, work, and trade uh, in central and north Scottsdale. Um, further, we, we rarely go to, the de to Desert Ridge and never go to Deer Valley, uh, to the Deer Valley Airport. Uh, the proposed District three includes industrial parks and young families. It's very different from, uh, very distant and distant from the suburban uh, single family housing that you'll find in North Ranch or North Scottsdale. Uh, we're a single community with shared interests and should not be stretched to include these areas as the commission proposed map depicts. Uh, please keep our community whole uh, and, and hopefully in a single congressional district as well. We do not share interests in central Phoenix, uh, which is a very urban area. Um, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be Lori, Bla Lori Gray. Yes, Ms. Gray, go ahead. Sorry about that. I just got unmuted. Um, thank you very much. Um, I actually am a realtor and I live, I actually live in Fountain Hills. Um, my family and myself, as far as the way we live, work, and worship uh, and shop, it is it is rare it, it's almost never <laughs> past uh, a certain point um it doesn't make sense to me for uh, desert ridge and deer valley airport to be in my district the, um, the western boundary for scottsdale and fountain hills and rio verde should be the city line which is scottsdale road not i-17 um, Scottsdale, Fallen Hills, and Rio Verde are Western cities. North Phoenix and I-17 are filled with young families, and our communities are different, and they should not be in the same district. Thank you, Ms. Gray. Thank the next, you. The next speaker will be Kathy Lee. 
And thank you for allowing us the time to speak. My name is Kathy Lee and I live in East Mesa, zip code 85209. The current district drawn for East Mesa, LD15, is divided in a way that is not competitive, fair, compact, and does not keep communities of interest together. As of now, you have us as part of Apache Junction, Queen Creek, and Santan Valley, which with we have nothing in common. From Guadalupe North and to the Maricopa County border, we have much more in common with the rest of Mesa than we do with the other areas mentioned. Infrastructure, light rail, libraries, senior citizen centers, recreation centers, parks are all facilities we frequent in the community. The current map also breaks up a great deal of the LDS community, as well as the Gilbert Unified School District. The closest you have come to keeping communities of interest together for that area was LD10 in map 3.0. I have the same concerns for the CD5 district on the current 7.1 map. I know it is not considered a competitive district, but each iteration of the maps has made it less competitive. If we are able to protect against extremism, we will encourage better representation. On a broader note, the current maps for Maricopa County do not take into consideration or represent the changing landscape of the growing communities of color. The current iteration has gone from three to two toss-up districts. The map must honor the VRA. We encourage you to follow the rules that the voters pass so that we will have compact, competitive, and fair districts. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next speaker will be Tempest Shires. Hi, my name is Tempest Shires. I'm a resident of Chandler, and according to the approved <coughs> draft map, I'm part of new District 13. 12 years ago, I moved with my family hey. to the United States. Hey. My, my husband's job What's has been that? from England to Central Phoenix, but we could choose where we live. We chose Chandler mainly because of our children and the excellent Chandler Unified School District. And because coming from a small English village, Chandler felt like it was a unique place with its own identity, vibrant, diverse community. Chandler has been our home for 20, 12 years now. And after a long road, all four of us became American citizens earlier this year. I'm so excited that I'm finally able to vote now and having a district that is competitive, that will promote high turnout and make our representatives more responsive and visible to Chandler is very important to me. I understand that my city of Chandler is too big to fit into just one district, but I'm very concerned that the draft map cuts it into three. I would really like the commissioners to revisit keeping the cities in the East Valley as far as possible as compact separate entities, respecting the school district boundaries and keeping Chandler in no more than two districts. I ask the commissioners to take out of the district 13, the parts that aren't actually Chandler and to add back one part that is, but is currently split in two. On the east side of District 13, currently, there's a strip of Gilbert between Val Vista and Greenfield. Gilbert is already too divided up into five different districts to lose this part, and it has a very different feel to the rest of South of Chandler. On the west side of District 13, there's an entirely self-contained Sun Lakes retiree community, which could also be moved. Although Sun Lakes is part of Maricopa County, it isn't part of the city of Chandler and the residents are much more alike the retirees of Awatuki foothills. Removing these two parts would then leave enough room to no longer split our Latino community in the north of Chandler in half at Ray Road. Moving the northern boundary of D13 to Elliott Road would allow this community to remain as one whole and a necessary part of Chandler. Thank you to the commissioners for all the hard work you're doing and for listening to me today. Lori, I can't hear you. I don't know if I'm the only one. That was my fault. Uh, the next three speakers are Frank Cothel, Bill Hart, and Verilyn Jackson Downing. Um, and I will remind everybody, if, I, if you're not signed in under the name that you registered, I won't be able to find you as an attendee. Mr. Cothel, your two minutes starts now. Good morning. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. I live in Sun City West. I've been a resident here for 11 years. Uh, just a little background, we've not been in a competitive district, either in LD22 or CD8. Now you have us 
in a worse situation where you've taken uh, the congressional district from Sun City West out to the Colorado River. I believe that uh, what, just a recommendation that you go take some of the population from the counties to the north of us and put us in another district that is more compatible. Here in Sun City West, we are a pretty much contained uh, community, but almost all of our movement is either to the south or to the east uh, as far as commercial interests. So I would recommend something being done there. There. I'm sorry. As far as the uh, legislative district, once again, uh, you have us uh, completely uh, uncompetitive. And I would say what we need to do is to take some of the population from the east of us over toward um, El Mirage, Peoria, and then make us more a more competitive district. So thank you very much for allowing me to speak and have a good day. Thank you. And the next speaker is Verilyn Jackson Downing. Verilyn, if you could unmute. There you go. I thought I did. <laughs> yep, you're good. We can hear All you. All right. Good morning. Um, I live in the Glendale area, um, District 8. Um, I'm fairly pleased with the lines at this point. Um, I see that they were moved up north, and I believe that our district is more competitive. And I want to be sure that my voice is heard uh, with my representation. Um, I was a census worker here in Arizona, so I know Glendale has become more diverse uh, than it has been in previous years. And I want to make sure that we have a voice uh, and I like to keep affordable uh, housing in our area as we're expanding. There are uh, lots of development, housing, going up, but I like to make sure that we have affordable housing in the Glendale area. I love the um, <clears throat> the developments that we're having in the Glendale area, improving our environment, our neighborhoods, our parks. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, so that's all I have to say. And uh, I want better and representation that is going to hear all the voices that are living in the Glendale district. Thank you. Our next speaker is William Bolas Root. I'm unmuting you now. Mr. Bolas Root, can you hear us? Yes. So please proceed. Okay. Uh, my name is William Bolas Root, and I'm a retired software engineer in Yuma. Uh, 85365, and I'm currently in CD4, LD13, and I would be in the proposed CD7 and LD23. So, uh, uh, Chair Newberg and commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to present my views to the commission today. Um, in the past, uh, the legislators were uh, charged with bound, uh, drawing the boundaries to the legislative districts, and they did so to ensure their party had the best chance to retain power. They created many safe districts uh, as they could, districts where their party bosses could put up a candidate that they uh, could rely on to toe the party line. Uh, districts could win time after time without having to invest much money or effort, uh, and districts were safe for the party of their interests and never mind what the voters had to say. But that led to poor government, and people were fed up with government that failed to address the issues or provide the kinds of services that would help them and their communities to prosper. The safe districts weren't responsive to their needs. They recognized that safe districts were uh, dysfunctional, that they produced voter apathy and disenchantment with government and low participation of voters. And so they, uh, in 2000, they took back the power from the legislature and passed Proposition 106, which would create the IRC and indicated that they should try to create districts that were, quote, fair and competitive districts unquote, not safe districts, but competitive districts. They knew that competitive uh, districts would have the opposite effect, that to win one, uh, the parties must put forth their best candidates and those familiar with the issues that would respond to the voters. When that happens, people become engaged in the political process, their government, their communities, and their elections, and they vote in greater numbers. So that is the way to get to democracy. 
Now, I know the commission feels that it's doing a good job with creating districts, but if you look at the draft map you, you've come up with, it's obvious that you've failed to carry out what the voters have charged you with, creating fair and competitive districts. Thank you. The next speaker will be Georgetta Pearson. Ms. Pearson? After Ms. Pearson, George Pizarro, Roberta Miller. Thank you for allowing me to uh, speak to the committee today. My name is Lynn Pearson. I do live in Maricopa County. And I'd just like to talk a little bit about my com community of interest. I live off of 12th Street, north of the 101. And uh, my community is Desert Ridge, the Desert Ridge area, but I frequently visit friends in the North Scottsdale area, near Scottsdale Airport and that uh, surrounding area. And we gather there socially in our area, um, but we also uh, travel down to Ganey Ranch where we shop and uh, do restaurants and things like that, visit their boutiques and, you know, for social reasons. So we have a lot of friends in that area. And we also buy our vehicles, uh, many of us there at the dealerships ne near that Scottsdale Regional Airport. Um, therefore, uh, the area north of Doubletree Ranch Road up to Frank uh, Lloyd Wright and between Scottsdale Road and 96th Street, I believe needs to be a part of the LD3 instead of the LD8. Right now, your map shows this section as being part of LD8 which is a mixing of communities that are very different in their values and their priorities. And, and that makes it difficult for our legislative representatives to be effective in any good, uh, effective in serving their constituents in that area. So I'd like to say um, to accommodate this population shift, you could uh, give the Southern boundary of LD3 that falls below the 101 to LD4 and to compensate LD8 you, you could move the southern boundary of LD8 to include the South Scottsdale, which it has much more in common with Tempe. And this makes more sense and keeps our communities more compact. Just ask that you follow the Arizona Constitution uh, when you are drawing our districts at this time. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our next speaker is George Pizarro. Mr. Pizarro, can you hear us? Mr. Pizarro? Yeah, can you guys can you guys hear me? Yes. Please okay. proceed. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so hi, my name is George Pizarro. I just want to thank you guys for your time right now. I live in the city of Gilbert and reside near the downtown area. Um, I've lived in the East Valley for the last 10 years. I currently work for the city of Phoenix. I'm a father and currently have a son attending school in the bordering community of Mesa. In my spare time, my family and I, we like to walk around the downtown area of Gilbert and enjoy all the city has to offer. Um, after looking at the legislative district new boundary map reference draft 10.2, uh, I had some concerns about the boundary realignment. It would appear we are the only East Valley community that will be fractured into five different legislative districts. This disrupts the community of our city, uh, excuse me, the continuity of our city and community. I also noted your maps removed two blocks in Gilbert and put them in, put them with the downtown Mesa, also three, three blocks in the Gilbert area and put them into an area all the way near Ahwatukee. In my opinion, this is not going to serve our community community's interest. I can understand splitting it into two pieces, but no more than that. Please keep our community whole in a single congressional district as well. We are an urban community and do not want to be added into a suburban district. Those areas do not represent our values and respect our priorities. I believe that redistricting should be fair and in compliance with the established guidelines of the U.S. Constitution. Thank you for your time and patience. Thank you. Our next speakers will be Lydia Guzman, Joseph Junker, and Giselle Garcia. Ms. Guzman? Thank you so much for allowing me to speak on this important issue. Um, my name is Lydia Guzman, and I'm with Chicanos por la Causa, and we are members of the Arizona Latino Coalition for Fair Redistricting. And I, what I wanted to say is um, our coalition submitted proposed 
uh, legislative districts. Uh, we submitted our proposed legislative districts are eight in total. Um, there's five in Maricopa County and three in Pima County. And we feel that these proposed districts would best represent the best interest of Latino voters and, and protect the Voting Rights Act. Um, we've been gathering to, to do education with our community starting from two years and a little over two years ago when we started engaging our Latino community to participate in the census. And throughout our meetings and our education and outreach, one thing came increasingly clear that one of the strongest communities of interest are the boundaries in with the school districts. The school districts were very essential in helping to um, educate communities, to reach out to parents, to engage them. And so what we ask is that our communities of interest are protected and especially with the school districts that the lines don't cross in uh, mm -hmm. and divide any school districts. Um, but I'm, 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 uh, I'm also aware that this week the Urban Institute released a report in which they uh, acknowledged that there was a huge undercount. And I know there was, we all know there was because of the pandemic and because of, you know, other other items that um, that were very difficult for for to have an accurate census count. So we know that there there is a big population growth. We feel that the districts that we submitted um, represent our population growth and protect. Thank you. Our next speaker is Joseph Junker. Mr. Okay, Junker. sorry about that. Hey, um, good afternoon. This is Joe Junker. I work for a technology consulting firm that's based uh, nearby. I'm uh, Maricopa, Ca Maricopa County, and I live in McCormick Ranch. Um, besides at the consulting firm, I'm a licensed and active real estate agent, as well as an online instructor at Grand Canyon University for, um, uh, for leadership and innovation. I really appreciate the opportunity that the commissioners have given us to uh, express our, uh, our concern or, or interest. And as you can tell from my work schedule, it's hard for me to keep up with some of the maps. But one of the most recent maps I saw um, had Scottsdale broken up into at least four different uh, districts, which is my concern. Being at McCormick Ranch, I'm living in a residential area, which is not high density. Um, and I would prefer to um, try to try to keep um, the Scottsdale whole, which is really where I'm spending most of my time. As I say, even my work is based there. And as an online instructor, I'm I'm more local to my uh, to my district. Um, I also, you know, for the personal interest, and I think you've heard it before, that I hope that you continue to take the Constitution in, at heart. In that the uh, uh, compactness and and really communities of interest are. Are higher priority than the competitiveness um, in in anything you do in your maps because it does appear that with what you've done with with us, uh, McCormick Ranch is at the far east north corner of something that reaches into almost central Phoenix, and it just didn't seem like a match to me as far as where I spend my time and what my community is. Again, I, I thank you all for uh, for the opportunity and hope you take that into into account. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Sandy Bartlett. And I will remind everyone, if I can't find you under the attendee list under the name that you uh, you uh, registered under, I'm not gonna be able to unmute you. So we're just moving through anybody I can find. So the next speaker is Sandy Bartlett. My name's Sandy Bartlett. I live in uh, Northwest Gilbert and I've lived here for 15 years with my husband. Uh, this is the heart and soul of Gilbert. Our downtown area is filled with new shops and restaurants uh, that we often visit, and that's where the Gilbert Market is, and that is where the town council meets to make our laws. Uh, your maps move two blocks in Gilbert and put them into uh, north into downtown Mesa and LD9. Uh, you also remove three blocks of Gilbert and put them into an area that spreads all the way to Ahwatukee, which is LD12. Uh, these are not communities of interest because uh, Gilbert wants to be together, and that's why we move. Ms. Bartlett? 
Ms. Bartlett? We lost your audio. Ms. Bartlett? Okay, it looks like she was she was kicked off. So uh, let's move on to uh, the next speaker, Susan Gannon, Linda Calderon, and Connie Henry. Ms. Gannon? Ms. Gannon, can you hear us? We'll move to the next speaker, Ms. Connie Henry. Lori, I think the speakers are trying to say that they're not getting unmuted, if I read the chat uh, correctly. Uh, Chairwoman, they are being unmuted. There's a request to unmute. And so if they don't uh, accept the request, then we can't hear them. Okay. So Ms. Ms. Ganning, you've been unmuted. Yes, hello? Can you hear me? Uh, is it Susan Gannon? Yes, it is. Okay, Ms. Gannon, please proceed. Okay, so I'm talking about, can I have the, I'm talking about the CD district, not the LD district. And I'm in the Anthem area. And just by looking at the um, way that this is drawn, and thank you again for allowing us to have this opportunity. Um, we don't have that much in line with the North of I-10, the Phoenix area, even though we are part of Phoenix, um, the Scottsdale area, the Fountain Hills area as of District 1, we would be more in line with the District 8, which is what we have been aligned with in the past. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Our next speaker is Connie Henry, and then it's April Hernandez, and then uh, Mr. Mohamdian. And Ms. Henry, can you hear us? We'll move to April Hernandez. April, can you hear us? Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, Ms. Hernandez, yeah. please proceed. Thank you, Commission, for the chance to speak. I live on uh, 2nd Street and Hatcher in North Phoenix. Um, I wanted to say that I am glad that Sunny Slope will be in Legislative District 2 with the rest of the North Mountain community. This new district now includes um, more of Washington Elementary School District and Glendale Union School District. Of a three-year-old, I'm already thinking about the future of, uh, and his education. I know that our state representatives are responsible for setting education budgets and if more parents are able to come together in the same district, we will be able to advocate for the best education possible. Thank you. Our next three speakers are going to be Howard Clemmer, Faisal Al Hassan, and then James Roth. Howard, can you hear us? We will move to Mr. James Roth. Mr. Roth, can you hear us? Mr. 
Mr. Roth, can you hear us now? Yeah, good morning. My name is James Roth. I, I live in Rio Verde. I'm a retired attorney. And uh, for my comment, I'd like to say that Rio Verde, Fountain Hills, and Scottsdale should continue to be in the same legislative district because this area shares a community and economic interest. This is the area where my neighbors and I live, do business, shop, dine, go to church, and participate in community activities. The current district, which includes Rio Verde, Fountain Hills, and all of Scottsdale, I believe accurately represents a community of interest of citizens who live and work together. Uh, the proposed inclusion of Desert Ridge and extending the district out west as far as I-17 to include parts of Anthem with Rio Verde and Fountain Hills and separating large parts of Scottsdale, basically dividing Scottsdale into three different parts from Rio Verde and Fountain Hills does not reflect an actual community with shared interests since in talking with my neighbors and myself, we rarely or never go to shop or you know, socialize in Desert Ridge or in Anthem. We don't do business there, we don't go to church there, and we don't shop there. So the communities of Rio Verde, Fountain Hills, and all of Scottsdale are, I believe, a distinct community and should be represented, represented by people from this area and not Desert Ridge or Anthem. And, uh, and in addition, I think in the past, uh, the, the past redistricting, I think there was a little bit too much emphasis on or focused on the idea of competitiveness. Um, and I think that the commission should follow the, the, the constitutional mandate uh, because the competitiveness is subservient to the other six factors that should be considered by the um, commission. So I think in some, I think the, the west border of our district should be no further west than Scottsdale Road. Thank you, Mr. Roth, the next speaker, we're going back up to Mr. Mohamdian. Yes, hi everybody. Um, my name is Abdul Jabbar Mohamdian. Um, I live in uh, Congressional District 8 in Glendale, representing the Sudanese refugee community. I suppose my this I uh, support my district the way it is. Uh, currently down because uh, it makes my district very competitive. During the pandemic, lots of small lots of small business in my community didn't survive, and also um, nobody asked my community. What we need, we lack a resource for the refugee because easy access to health care for refugee. And we also noted that our education in this area has not done a lot of my a lot of my community. Uh, as a lot of us who arrive from 10 to 15 years, uh, uh, 10 to 15 years ago, are still struggling and not much than changing. We need more, we need more resource for refugees in Glandia. And by keeping my, um, my district this way, I feel that um, candidates will take us more seriously and not and not forget that we are a part of this community as well. This is my point. We're looking forward to hear from you guys and much more. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Najat Dahia, Craig Steven, and April Tornquist. Ms. Dahia? Hello? Najat? Yes, please. Hello. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Najat Zihaya, and um, thank you for, for giving me the opportunities to speak. Also, I'm representative. I'm representing uh, some refugees uh, in my community 
also uh, like Mohammed. Uh, uh, I live in District 24, so we are in need uh, for more companies. We are in need for our district to be more competitive because we believe that when people fight for our vote, they will find out that we need more resources. Like school, um, I have, I, I, I have seen that um, in the district I live in. Now the school need to uh, be better. Uh, we need more funds for a better equipment. And um, I feel like my children will be benefited when people fight hard for, um, for my vote to raise the standard in the public school. Uh, during the pandemics, there were no school social distance in my district being implemented or enforced. Um, and I feel that representative needed to be better. They need to do a better job for listening uh, to our community or to our concern. And that's about it. And thank you for giving me the chance. Thank you. Our next three speakers will be Craig Stevens, April Turnquist, and Michael Olivares. Craig? Please yes, thank you. <clears throat> this is Craig Stephan. Um, I just wanted to say uh, I live in Scottsdale. And I wanted to address <clears throat> my communities of interest here. And I wanted to speak uh, specifically to um, issues involving your, your maps for LD4 and LD8. Um, and I wanted to reiterate uh, what uh, Mr. Joe Junker uh, said, and that is that I, I also uh, share his concern that Scottsdale remain whole because uh, that is essentially the community of interest for those of us who live on McCormick Ranch. Um, if you look at the map for LD4, you'll see that the northern portion of the east boundary of that map is Scottsdale Road. However, when it when you get down to Doubletree Ranch Road, that east boundary jogs over to Hayden Road, which is east of Scottsdale Road. The area in LD4 south of Doubletree Ranch Road, which includes uh, the area past McCormick Parkway and Indian Bend, is part of the heart of McCormick Ranch, zip code 85. 258. I live just north of McCormick Parkway, so my residence is in LD4 on that map. However, I, I meet with clients at an office just north of Doubletree Ranch Road, which is in LD8 on your maps. Therefore, moving the east border of LD4 from Scottsdale Road to Hayden Road artificially divides my communities of interest. Um, so I request that the east border of LD4 be Scottsdale Road from north to south without jogging over to Hayden Road at any point. Next, my community's ventures for shopping, dining, health care, uh, the small businesses that, that are frequented by people on McCormick Ranch uh, essentially lie within the boundaries of Scottsdale. Um, and certainly the west boundary should be Scottsdale Road, which is the main artery north and south throughout Scottsdale. Um, and um, with respect to LD8, the, uh, the south boundary should be no, no further south, in my opinion, than McDowell Road. Um, there's no connection between uh, those people who live and work in Scottsdale and, and, Tempe, and the uh, Tempe area that is uh, currently on LD8. I think that the, uh, the, the boundary there should stop at uh, no further south than McDowell Road. Um, and we should. Thank you. <coughs> Speaker is April Turnquist. Howdy, can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. please proceed. Okay. Um, I'm April Turnquist. I am in Gilbert off of uh, Gilbert Road in Warner. And uh, I'm in that, that little finger there that got uh, uh, absorbed into uh, Ahwatukee and Chandler. I moved to Gilbert 17 years ago, uh, deliberately, grew up in Mesa, I've lived in Chandler. I wanted to move to Gilbert because of the country feel, um, because of the uh, 
Well, because of the people. We have a close knit community here. Um, by separating this finger up, you're separating me from the rest of my school district. You're separating me from uh, those that I go to church with. Um, and the uh, congressional district lines it isn't any better. It doesn't even line up with the legislative district lines. Uh, in, in short, Gilbert just appears to be a, a disaster to me. And uh, I would ask you that you keep Gilbert together. Gilbert is a unique community and uh, we moved here for a very specific reason. Um, we, we love our, uh, we love our animals. We love our, we love God. We love our families and, uh, uh, we would like to stay together. So, um, if you would, uh, remove that finger from, uh, Ahwatukee and Chandler and keep us with Gilbert, uh, including my neighbors just to the north of me, uh, we, we would greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is going to be Michael Oliveira. Hello, uh, thank you all for giving me an opportunity to speak. Um, I currently, looking at the maps, am in Congressional District 1. Um, I know there's a lot of concerns as far as how Scottsdale is being split up, but you know, I just want to stress that being competitive is ultimately what we are seeking. Um, I live near the Arcadia community, um, and I feel that when we choose to simply look at communities as a whole and not competitive, I feel that a lot of communities and a lot of uh, um, small groups get taken for granted. Um, you know, especially when you create a a strong district for a certain uh, group of people, uh, I feel that they don't put as much effort in in trying to really see what the community as a whole has to say. So I simply want to say that right now I see that. Um, Congressional mm -hmm. District One uh, seems to be seems to look very competitive, and I would like to keep it that way. And I would again like to stress that the surrounding congressional districts also remain competitive. And also commenting on legislative districts four and two, um, I say that um, I think you guys are doing a great job as far as those two uh, legislative districts go, because they also seem to be very competitive as well. And uh, so thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. Again, I just want to stress that when we keep these districts competitive, both parties make a bigger effort to reach out to every single person in those communities. Thank you very much. Our next speaker will be Adil Nadiela, Angela Salazar Williford, and then Brendan Walsh. Nadil, we see you, but you're not unmuted. Let's move to Angela Salazar Williford. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning, Chairwoman Newberg, Vice Chairman Watchman, and members of the commission. My name is Angela Williford. I represent the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community. Thank you for this opportunity to provide feedback on the commission's final draft map. This can't be an easy task, and we applaud your efforts on listening to the needs and wants of the communities of interest. We appreciate the work of the commission that has done thus far. My comments today are directed to congressional district number four and the draft legislative district number eight. First, with regards to the draft congressional district number four, the community supports the construction of this district. We believe the proposed district is consistent with the principles of our community, which we provided previously to the commission. At this time, the community offers no recommendations to this map. Second, the community appreciates the work of the commission to construct legislative district. We know this is not, not an easy task. In regards to the community has proposed refinements to the draft legislative district number eight. We believe the proposed refinements keep the intent of the spirit of the draft district map while also being consistent with the community's legislative district principles. The first recommendation to the draft district map is to include the Saddleback area into the district. The area is located within the boundaries of the community along the northern border. Ironically, the commission included this area in the draft congressional district number four. We believe this may be a simple oversight. Second, you have received a letter of support from Mesa Public School Districts related to one of the community's principles, which is to include for the city of Mesa where community students attend. As such, we have the time and time until this draft legislative map to map areas in the area of Mesa that are consistent with this principle. Generally speaking, the requirements the community is proposing meets the population target with acceptable deviation. 
More specifically, our GIS staff will provide the commission with the detailed mapping detail. Thank you for the opportunity to provide comment on the commission draft district maps, and I would be happy. And thank you for this time. I, I have a question. I, 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 That previous previous speaker was saying we and the and the suggestion was submitted on behalf of of I, I think a group and I didn't hear uh, who what on behalf of what group this previous speaker was was speaking on behalf of. Am I still unmuted? Yes, um, Madam Chair, are you addressing Angela Salazar Williford? Was that the previous speaker? Yes. Do you yes, know what she's, organization? She's still, she's still on the line and she's still unmuted. Woman Newberg, I'm not sure if you heard. I'm with the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community. Perfect. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you very Thank much. You. The next three speakers will be Brendan Walsh, Joseph Corda, and Ryan Boyd. Mr. Walsh, can you hear us? Okay. Uh, Mr. Corda is not online. Mr. Boyd, Ryan Boyd. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Ryan Boyd. Uh, I live over in Grand Ave and Van Buren, right on the border between LD11 and LD1 in your draft maps. Uh, I just wanted to say hey, that I, I do really appreciate the uh, LD1 design, keeping the kind of communities along that light rail with Northern here within Central Phoenix together. Um, I think that it has been something that was kind of missing in previous uh, maps that we saw where there was a lot more kind of focus on that um, east west versus a lot of the north south travel that happens a lot of folks uh, enjoy this urban kind of core and keeping that together. Um, furthermore, I think it's nice because you, you see that central city um, within the ring between the I-10 and the I-17. Is, is very much, um, it was divided up, I think, three ways in the previous map. So it's, it's nice to see that, and I think it's, and I support the Latino coalition's maps for a lot of the districts you see in the Western areas with that. Um, and beyond that, though, I just wanted to note that uh, w where possible, I think it would be good to just keep uh, districts as competitive as possible. I understand that it is um, not exactly the, the, on the top of the legal requirements, but it is nice because when you're out there and you're knocking doors for local races or talking about things like light rail or just community services, people are a lot um, less uh, less in one camp or another. It's my my own experiences, especially here in what would be LD1 in this other uh, area. People have a wide variety of things, and I think it's better represented when the districts are as competitive as we can make them. But again, really support this uh, this new LD1. I think it's a, a good design, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Brendan Walsh. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Adil Najila. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, I couldn't hear uh... Mr. Walsh, please proceed. Okay, sorry about that. Hi, my name is Brendan Walsh. I'm the Executive Director of Central Arizonans for Sustainable Economy, or CASE. We're an organization that works on uh, economic equality or uh, equal opportunity and civic engagement. So um, we are very concerned, obviously, with representation of working communities, particularly majority minority districts, but also for those of us that live in the sort of working class suburbs to, to make sure that we're in competitive districts. And uh, I do want to talk about and I've, I've seen some comments basically say that we have to balance competitiveness with the other uh, things. And, and I do want to say that, you know, I agree. I want to talk today in particular about uh, legislative district four, which is where I live. Um, I spoke about this in one of the draft, draft mat hearings, but I'm very glad to see that um, the Sunny Slope area, the Metro Center area, basically what I would consider the Black Canyon Corridor are kept together, which is uh, largely the Glendale Union High School District, the North Mountain Preserve. For me, this is an excellent balance of you know what we will see with competitiveness and keeping communities of interest together. So I'm very thankful for that, and I hope you'll keep it together. I do just want to say a word about Legislative District 4 as well. Um, it's really the only uh, one of the one one or two toss up areas, and I would hate to see uh, changes made to that district that 
A, um, for marginal gains in communities of interest would make it less competitive. So we really, really much appreciate the work you're doing and, uh, and we thank you very much for this opportunity to comment. Thank you. I believe uh, Deal Najila is back on the line. Mr. Najila, can you hear us? Oh, yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adil Najila. Uh, currently, I live in the new legislative district, number two. Uh, I'm off the I-17 and Cactus. I am a member of Sudanese community, and I support my new district as drawn because I believe that the competitive district are very important for communities like mine. I like that, and we are now connected with the folks with a similar interest in Sunny Sloop. As the refugees, we have a unique experience here. When a politicians need our vote to win it, and it means that they need to respond to our needs that we cannot be forgotten. Also, during the pandemic, a small business in our community struggled to get support. They need it because they left behind. And I hope this issue might be respond as soon as possible. And thank you so much for uh, listening. Uh, to me and give me a chance to speak. Thank you. Our next three speakers will be David Gordon, Bernard Miller, and Frank Rizzo. Mr. Gordon, can you hear us? Yes, yes. can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Gordon. I've lived in Peoria, Arizona for 23 years. I'm married. My wife is a retired teacher. I'm disabled vet from the Vietnam area and a retired registered nurse. Uh, I'm quite involved with the city of Peoria. I'm on the design and review board and the volunteer firefighters retirement board for the city of Peoria. I'm also a PC in the Vogel precinct and we're located in Congressional District 8 and Legislative District 21. Our current map in Congressional District 8 to me is not very competitive. The new map gives us new opportunities for diversification and competitiveness, and I really appreciate that. But I'm somewhat confused about LD21 because it's now down along the border below Tucson. And it's always been up in the area where we live in Peoria, which makes no sense to me. So, I don't know if there's new legislative district we're going to be in or what's happening. That, that's something we have to find out. I do appreciate all the work that work into creating new legislative districts. I know that has to be really hard with all the things in this 2020 census was not really Thank you. Our next thing is, is Mr. Bernard. Mr. Bernard Miller. The rest of you, if you want to make sure that you, you mute yourself. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, please yeah. proceed. Thank you. Yeah, my name, yeah, my is, name Miller, is Miller, and I live in Gilbert, Gilbert uh, specifically uh, near Cooper and Elliott. Um, could we, could we get this? Five, two, three, three. There's a lot of feedback right now. Is it possible for us to figure out how to, because it's it's difficult to hear the speakers. So if, if we could figure out why we're getting that feedback, that would be helpful. Uh, Commissioner Lerner, I believe it's the, the speaker who is having the feedback. How do I solve it? I believe you, it's, it is it's working now. Please proceed. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Bernard Miller and I live in Gilbert near Cooper and Elliott, uh, zip code 85233. Um, 
in reviewing the le legislative district map, I, I have several concerns. I, I live, like I said, in Northwest Gilbert and have for over 27 years. Uh, the proposed LD map 10.2 does not respect Gilbert's community of interest or town boundaries. It separates Gilbert into five different districts. Uh, more importantly, the heritage district of Gilbert is the heart and soul of the community with shops, restaurants, farmers market, many parades, special events, and the uh, seat of the uh, town government. Yet it's placed in a district with Ahwatukee, which is on the other side of the county and shares pretty much no community interest with Gilbert. I strongly encourage you to respect the city boundaries and keep Gilbert as whole as possible. The northern boundary should be baseline and the western boundary should be Arizona Avenue. I would also like to request that a draft map hearing be scheduled in the East Valley. Not a single hearing is scheduled in the East Valley and I can see no good reason why this is so. In reviewing the Congressional District Map 7.1, I also have similar concerns. It again groups Gilbert together with areas that share no community of interest. I ask that you keep Gilbert together with Queen Creek and Mesa and the district needs to stay within Maricopa County and not include parts of Pinal County. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Frank Rizzo. Mr. Rizzo? Yes, can you hear me? We can hear you, please proceed. Thank you. My name is Frank Rizzo and I'm a retired seven year resident of Surprise. I live in Sun City Grand. And um, this is mostly my community of interest. And in the last 25 years, I've moved four times from Ahwatukee Chandler area to Carefree, to Anthem and now to surprise in my retirement years. And I moved based on the communities of interest that I felt I would be um, living, working and worshiping in. So now uh, with, with LD29, uh, it seems that they've cut off some of our, um, some of our community to the east where we spend quite a bit of our time. Um, my church is in Sun City West, and it's it seems that Sun City is being um, cut in two and moved south. So LD29 is considerably south. I don't go directly down that way. That's quite a ways away. Um, I probably uh, live and communicate within the first uh, 10 miles around um, Sun City Grand. Also when it, District 9, it puts me in, a, in an area where I'm possibly uh, working with people uh, to the far north and to the far south and all the way west. And I don't think that's uh, significant for our community of interest, which is the retired communities in Sun City, Sun City West and Sun City Grand Surprise. Um, and now we're we're shipped out to the um, to the west to the desert areas, going north to Wickenburg or to um, Kingman and south, almost to Yuma. So, it, to thank you. Our next speaker is Tim Shalek. Mr. Shalek. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Please proceed. Hello, I'm Tim Shalek, and I've lived in the Gilbert, uh, Northwest Gilbert and LD12 for the past 13 years. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, before that I was in the Air Force for 24 years and of all the, in all our travels, we loved Arizona the best. So I don't have a long term history here, but um, my passion is no less. Uh, I just wanted to state off the bat that town boundaries and school districts are inherent communities of interest. Um, we're the only East Valley community that um, is divided up into five legislative districts. And I could understand, I could understand two, 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 but, but um, um, dividing, dividing urban, and rural, urban and rural, but dividing, but dividing the town, dividing into, the town five, into five. Mr. Shalek, Mr. Shalek. I believe Mr. Shalek is cut, was cut off. Uh, we will come back to Mr. Shalek. The next person is Mr. Douglas Friday. Mr. Friday, we've asked you to unmute. Can you unmute yourself? I have unmuted myself. I wanted to stay oh. muted while other people are talking. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Mr. Friday. Please proceed. 
Uh, hi, my name is Douglas Friday. I'm a former longtime Green Party registered voter in North Chandler, near the 101, near the 101 in Ray. Um, thank you for these work on these maps. Uh, when I looked at the maps, a thought hit me. Um, it appeared as if competitiveness was determined by trying to keep a balance of sorts between the numbers of safe districts between both major parties. Uh, in my observation, the candidate nominees for safe districts tend to be determined in the primary, which encourages candidates to pander to the extremes of both parties. This is not good for democracy. Uh, indulging in the extremes often encourages demonizing the other party, which makes it harder to work with them and actually accomplish anything. Instead of what, two ultra competitive districts, I would prefer maps where maybe two to three districts were the safe seats and all the remaining districts were sufficiently competitive that either major party could win each cycle if they nominated the right person for that district. Uh, I have a different view of competitiveness perhaps when, the, when I want the best overall candidate to win and not simply the one I agree with the most or the one who can simply win a majority of their district's partisan majority. I encourage you to seriously consider making as many districts as competitive as possible, minimizing the number of safe districts, as I believe that results in better governance for all of us. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Selleck. It looks like you're back. Yes, I am. Um, what I was getting at was that uh, my main point is that uh, the town boundaries uh, should be respected in determining the legislative districts. Uh, right now, we've been split up into where our downtown, which is kind of the heart and soul, that is only about a mile and a half or two miles from our, our civic center plaza, which contains our city hall police department, they're separated into legislative districts. So I think Gilbert should be all kept together. Um, the new proposed LD12, um, the boundary has been moved down to Elliott, which again separates our downtown area and lumps it in with Mesa. Uh, so my biggest point is that um, this panhandle that's been created that's on your screen right there is just um, that new legislative district extends uh, westward 20 more than 20 miles through Chandler to the westmost edge of Ahwatukee. It's clear across the county and it's an incoherent collection of disparate communities of interest. Um, our civic center complex and downtown area should be kept within the same legislative district and more closely aligned to the Gilbert town boundaries. Between the areas of downtown Gilbert, the Heritage District, Civic Center Plaza, we hold lots of holiday events, festivals, parades, and these activities unite us as a community. This is Gilbert's most critical community of interest. I don't see how these are close to communities of interest. Uh, Southern Gilbert does share a community of interest with Queen Creek. We shop in similar areas, use similar parks and trails, and family members live there, and the rural sections of their respective communities. Thank you. The next speaker is Lorraine Rogers, followed by Karina Ruiz de Diaz, and uh, followed by Pastor Ar Aubrey Barnwell. Lorraine, can you unmute yourself? Please unmute me. You are unmuted. You are unmuted. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Lorraine Rogers. I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. In total, I've lived in several neighborhoods over Scottsdale in over three decades. I first moved here in 1975. I serve as and currently am a volunteer with the City of Scottsdale's Board of Commission and volunteer in other areas of the city as well. The current final draft map splits Scottsdale into three legislative districts, as you've heard and know, across city and multiple across the city and multiple congressional districts. Uh, for, from a congressional district standpoint, it splits Scottsdale by Hayden Road, though this cuts across HOAs, other communities. It affects school districts. Um, for example, the Scottsdale Unified School District, plus over 180,000 people commute to Scottsdale, the city, along with the 101 and work across Scottsdale. We are very interdependent with the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community, or the SI, SRPMIC, as it's called. The city and tribes also share a powerful interest in protecting desert and mountain lands, the character of diverse neighborhoods, etc. Keep, Scotts, keep Greater Scottsdale Together. I've heard several other folks um, who are also speaking um, say that in one way or another. Um, I know that a, a woman in Scottsdale, another Scottsdale citizen, Emily Wilson, submitted a legislative district map, although it's called CDF009. And that map, um, as I've looked at it and gone through all the background, meets all six of the IRC criteria, A through F. For drawing a district and it's respectful, one of the tenets, not the only one, of the U.S. Constitution and the Voting Rights Act. Um, we don't have a lot of diversity in Scottsdale and I think it'd be really helpful if we extended that. 
uh, and change that whole uh, platform. As I understand these criteria, each one of them, and others have said that in the chat I've seen, are of equal importance. One is not more important than the other. So, in Thank you. The next speaker is Karina Ruiz. Karina, can you unmute yourself? Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, thank you everyone. Uh, my name is Karina Ruiz. I am a DACA recipient, the executive director at the Arizona Duma Coalition. Um, I'm also a member of the PTO board at Mountain View Elementary. Um, and I have a 19 year old uh, who is uh, a registered voter. I live in the Sunny Slope area and I support Sunny Slope being a part of District 2 because I believe it connects us uh, to other similar areas through the Black Canyon. I also like how it is um, right now because it is competitive. And for some people that might not uh, be relevant, but for people like me, who's um, I cannot vote because of my immigration status and families of mixed status, my son is the only one in my household who can vote. And our voices are watered down already because we cannot vote and participate in that way. So fighting uh, for our vote from our elected officials makes really important sense when it comes to the watering down of voices like my family. I also wanna point and acknowledge that there are community members here who are Spanish speaking members and don't have access to uh, immediate translation. I hope that this is fixed in the future so that these community members can have, have access to what is being uh, said here in these meetings. Um, yeah, so that's um, basically what I wanted to offer left and hopefully you keep um, District 2 as it is in the maps uh, with the Sunny Slope area as it is. Thank you. Uh, Lori, can you please clarify for the community what kind of translation services we have available, uh, we including right now? We have a Spanish translator here, and if, if anybody needs one, they can just ask a member of staff, and I can have her announce again and introduce herself again. And and how would they do that in in the chat function or? Yes, that would make the most sense. Okay, thank you. And Brenda and, is and, and right can, here. Can, can we please repeat that in Spanish? <laughs> okay. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Brenda López. Uh, soy intérprete en español. Si, utiliza, si necesita interpretación, por favor, mande un mensaje para identificar que usted necesita un intérprete. Hi, my name is Brenda Lopez. I am the Spanish interpreter. If you need uh, interpretation in Spanish, please send us a message and uh, let us know so we can identify you for the Spanish interpretation. Thank you. Our next speaker is Aubrey Barnwell. Mr. Barnwell, can you can you unmute you unmute yourself? I think the next one is Mike Rakowski. And after Mike Rakowski is Magdalena Acosta. Magdalena, please proceed. Uh, can everybody hear me? I'm on mute it now as well. Oh, I'm sorry. Magdalena will proceed and then uh, Pastor Barnwell will proceed with you afterwards. We can hear you, Magdalena. Hello, my name is Magdalena, Magdalena Acosta. I live in the area of 75th Avenue and Indian School in Phoenix, Arizona. I am very satisfied with, uh, with our new district, but I really feel that there is a lack of after school activity funding. Um, I believe that keeping my district together will allow my community to continue advocating for better funding so that our children are more inclined to take part in constructive activities. I believe in order for schools to be pro properly funded throughout the state of Arizona, um, we need um, more districts that are more competitive. It means that candidates for office must be attuned to the changing dynamics and needs of their districts. It limits extremism on both sides of the spectrum 
and means that candidates must listen to voters from all parties and fairly weigh their decisions. Competition is good for our democracy and education. This is very important to me as a new grandmother. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Aubrey Barnwell. Mr. Barnwell. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm Pastor Aubrey Barnwell. I live at 83rd Avenue and Cactus in Peoria. And I'm a pastor at First New Life Church, which is at 19th Avenue in Rosier in Phoenix. I will be part of the new Congressional District 3 uh, in the draft maps approved by the commission. I support the uh, congressional maps as they have been drawn because it brings some balance to where I live and where I pastor. Uh, Peoria is very diverse. Um, there are middle class families in Peoria. It is not monolithic group. And in the past, the needs of more diverse areas of Peoria have been overshadowed. So that diversity that we share with South Phoenix can bring about more equity and synergies by uniting our voices around our community interests and needs. Uh, the area where I pastor should have the opportunity to uh, look like where I live. Um, these maps will bring equality and continuity to our community. Uh, together, we will be able to organize for the development of community amenities and resources in South Phoenix that we already enjoy in Peoria. Uh, I also support the new Congressional District 8, which is uh, encompasses my neighbors in Glendale. And competition, I believe, is important because that is how we uh, better have better ideals. We get a better understanding of what our community needs, and it fosters compromise. And if there is no competition, we do not get the best outcome. It's all about balance. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Commission, for what you're doing. Thank you. Our next two speakers will be Mike Rakowski and Patricia Thomas, uh, and then we will take a 15 minute break. Mr. Rakowski, please, please proceed. Thank you very much. I'm Mike Rakowski. I live in the North Mountain area. And over the past 26 years, I've lived up and down this 7th Street corridor from uh, Northern and 7th Street until now, just north of Peoria. It's a, it's a great community. It's, it's one with a lot of uh, commonality. Uh, up and down that area. Um, the city, I know the city of Phoenix has been paying attention through the mayor and councilwoman to Sunny Slope and the neighborhoods there. I was glad to participate a couple weeks ago at uh, some of the institutions in this area are, are Sunny Slope High School, Great High School, and also uh, uh, the John C. Lincoln Hospital. We had a, a festivity with the congressman and the mayor and councilwoman. Uh, to plant trees along with private uh, community of Buddhists uh, in the area. And so it's a, it's a lively area with good shops and restaurants. And, and I think the, uh, the uh, cohesion in this area is very positive, but I also agree with, with a lot of the other speakers that I've heard that have said that uh, to me, competitiveness should not be downgraded as a criterion. Uh, it's very important that, that uh, the citizens in an area have the attention of the elected officials and a competitive district ensures that. It's a great community. I hope you'll maintain the integrity of this area and thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank you. Our next speaker before the break is Patricia Thomas. Ms. Thomas? Yes, thank you. Hi, um, I'm uh, Patricia Thomas. I'm retired. I moved back to Arizona in 2015 uh, and I'm actually an Arizona native. Uh, currently, I, I live at uh, 103rd Avenue and Broadway, and um, I, you know, and for the past five years, I've uh, worked at advocate for my community, and I want to see equity for all people. But um, you know, my community not only includes my neighborhood, and it includes people in Arizona who, like me, are, are black or people of color seniors and just people who would like to see Arizona reach its potential of being a state of inclusion for all people. So right now I'm in a district where my voice is being heard so I, I'm happy about that and it looks like with the new map I, I, I will still be happy with what I have but I know many Arizonans who are not listened to so if you know if to make sure that all voices are heard, 
um, you can um, do this by making sure that there are more competitive districts. Uh, competition is something that all Arizonans, regardless of party value, um, because it encourages politicians to hear our concerns, even if they may not agree with us. And that's it. Thank you. At this time, we will take a 15 minute break and we will return at 1145.
Madam Chair, if it's okay with you, I will go ahead and announce the next three speakers. We'll start with Crystal, Crystal Lopez, Mark Bernal, and then Joshua Wells. Ms. Lopez, can you unmute yourself? Ms. Lopez, can you hear us? Crystal? Want able to hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Please, please proceed. Okay. Um, I support competitiveness, competitiveness in all districts because I'm a longtime resident of the East Valley uh, Queen Creek community. And like other vo voter and like others have stated, I too feel that my vote is taken for granted. Um, I live near four major golf courses and at no point has anyone asked me or the indigenous community how we feel about current water conservation efforts, um, which is extremely important to me and my family and my, com and my community. <clears throat> As a descendant of my grandparents who came to this country seeking citizenship through the Bracero program, I understand the importance of sustainable agriculture. Um, I worry about the future of my children because I don't want them to be taken for granted either. Uh, the current expansion that is occurring out here is worrisome, especially with understanding of the urban heat island effect. This highly impacts water retention in our soils and an increase of heat waves. The reason for an increasing um, urban heat island effect um, in the growth of Phoenix as we build out for farther and farther into the desert valley. I asked myself if we will have access to clean drinking water instead of using it for major golf courses that very um, limited people use. Uh, will the working class people and minority communities continue to be dismissed? That is something I'm really worried about because if no one takes the time to fight for a vote and what we care about, then we will never have true representation. All we ask is that we have not been forgotten because we live here too and contribute just like everyone else. And that's why competitive, competitiveness is extremely important to my community. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Our next speaker is Mark Brunell. Mr. Brunell? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yep, please proceed. Awesome, awesome. Um, so first and foremost, good morning. Buenas tardes. Uh, my name is uh, Mark Bernal. Um, first and foremost, I appreciate and recognize the privilege of being able to hop on and here and talk with you all today. Um, you know, not many folks and people from communities such as the one I'm representing today, which is uh, the Latinx and indigenous communities, specifically the Pasco Yaqui tribe. Um, you know, often know that these meetings are occurring or, you know, have access to them. So um, I thank you for that. Um, I'm currently residing in Queen Creek. Um, I'm a firm believer in pushing and wanting to keep districts competitive. As I previously stated, having uh, lived in said district for 20 plus years, that has not been the case. The reason and argument I would have to ignite this competitiveness would be for candidates to feel the need to fight for my vote. I would like to see things such as more transparency when it comes to spending better access to information and resources for minority communities. And I would like to see more engagement with indigenous and Latinx community, because currently it seems like we are almost forgotten when it comes to resources and education. As someone who represents said communities and, and multiple uh, recent election cycles, having to go to these communities and let them know um, that we are trying to fight and strive for their uh, um, rights, but unfortunately only comes down to whenever it is election cycles. I think it is pertinent for these communities to be represented throughout the entirety of the year and not just election cycles. Um, and that's why I support competitive districts, because that is what your democracy is about and not taking any communities for granted. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Joshua Wells. Mr. Wells. 
Hello, can you hear me all right? Yes, please proceed. Perfect. My name is Joshua Wells. I live near North 31st Avenue and West Encanto Boulevard over in Phoenix, Arizona. After growing up in Western New York State and living briefly in California, I came to Arizona in 2009. I have set up roots here and built a family that is multilingual and multiracial. Our community of interest often struggles to find resources that reflect our diversity, such as school programs where our children can learn to flourish in both of their home languages. I am happy with my new district and would like to see the commission keep my community together so that we can continue to advocate for the needs of our families and children. That said, when I first moved to Arizona, I became enamored by its frontier spirit and the beautiful Red Rocks. As Arizonans, we understand the value of the statement, may the best man or woman win. Politicians, should have to listen to a diverse array of constituents and develop policies where all communities of interest are heard. Because of this, I am urging the council to also create more competitive districts when possible. Districts where in alignment with the values of the Old West, courageous leaders can have the opportunity to show why they are the best to represent us. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next three speakers will be Tamika Brown, Susan Suzanne Mead, and then Nancy Barto. Tamika Brown, can you hear me? Um, yes, good morning. Can you guys hear me? Yes, thank you. Please proceed. Hi, my name is Tamika Brown. I currently live on 19th Avenue Dunlap, part of the new congressional district that goes from Glendale and North Phoenix and it stands out Northwest. I want to leave the district as is because it accurately represents my community. I also like that the districts are competitive. I like that, that the idea that elected officials need to fight for my voice because here in Arizona and working class people, especially those of color like myself, has been underserved. If we keep the redistricting lines competitive, the people running for office will have to appeal to us for support and that to ensure that we get better and fairer representation so that the needs of our communities and our interests as working class people are met. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next, uh, let's say, three speakers are going to be Suzanne Mead, Nancy Barto, and then Irma Pacheco. Suzanne, can you hear us? Suzanne, you can proceed. Suzanne, we can't hear you. Okay, we'll come back to Suzanne. Our next speaker is Nancy Bartow. Nancy, can you hear us? We'll move to the next speaker, which is Irma Pacheco. Irma? The next speaker is Mike Martinez. Mr. Martinez, Mike? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Please proceed. All right, well, um, uh, thank you for letting me speak um, here before you. Uh, my name is Mike Martinez. I currently live close to 7th Avenue in Thomas. Um, I've lived in Arizona for eight years. I feel our state is greatly improved by districts that don't think about benefiting parties, but instead, what is best for Arizona? And I also think that competitive districts really embody what Arizona is about. I like when elected officials actually have to fight for my vote instead of just taking it for granted. Um, I would love to see redistricting commission um, uh, produce final maps that promote balance so that both parties have a fighting chance to be elected. And that's basically um, what I'm emphasizing is just like um, uh, fairness in the redistricting pro uh, process and, and balance. So um, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Nancy Bartow. Ms. Bartow? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you, Chairwoman Newberg and commissioners. My name is Nancy Bartow and I live near Desert Ridge and represent the voters of District 15 in the northern part of the Metro Phoenix, Scottsdale, Cave Creek, Glendale, and Peoria areas. Under the Constitution's instructions to abide by the Federal Voting Rights Act, the goal of the IRC is achieving fair boundary lines for Arizona. 
but 10 years ago, that didn't happen in my area. And voters continually express frustration that people residing in the northern section of Maricopa County, Cave Creek and Carefree specifically, were drawn into Yavapai County, with which they had literally nothing in common geographically, nor as a community of interest, two priorities in the Voting Rights Act. Second, LD15 included important sections of six cities, as well as multiple school districts, another example of how the communities of interest provision of the Voting Rights Act was, was rather put on the sidelines and people were not as well served as they should have been. Other lesser goals took precedence. This time around, uh, may I suggest a greater focus on achieving more contiguous North Phoenix districts that take all of these constitutional considerations to heart, including competitiveness to a great extent, specifically the following. Sunny Slope should be in the central corridor and not extend north of Shaw Butte, a natural geographic divide. Second, a, a District 2 priority should be keeping Deer Valley together, including the Deer Valley Airport. And dis District 2 shouldn't be drawn so far south. Rather, the southern boundary should be north of the 101. Third, considering the wide differences in the District 4 map as drafted, the area south of Camelback Road is not a community of interest with the arts and entertainment areas to the south from the different communities of interest further north, which should be separate and distinct, envisioned as a truly North Phoenix LD, the northern boundary of which should extend north to Deer Valley or Pinnacle Peak. These align much more with PV. Finally, District 4 should go further east of the 101 and include all of PV schools. On Congressional District 1, the boundary of, D, of, of District 8 and CD1 should move west to the I-17, not Cave Creek Road. Those are very different communities of interest. And finally, on the Alhambra and Canto and Camelback East areas, those should be in a central Phoenix district. Deer Valley, North and North Phoenix are very different and shouldn't be lumped together. Thank you so much for allowing me to comment today. Thank you. The next speaker is Suzanne Mead. Suzanne, can you hear us? The next speaker after Suzanne Mead is Irma Pacheco. Irma, can you unmute yourself? The next speaker after Irma is Nelson Morgan. Nelson, can you hear us? It looks like Irma Pacheco is online now. Irma, can you hear us? Sure. Uh, good yeah. morning, my name is Irma Pacheco. I live in 19th Avenue and Rochelle Road in Phoenix, Arizona. I am satisfied with my new district. Uh, but there are some issues to remark. We need our community library to be renovated. We need more green spaces like parks and no more pollution. It is important that our, to, that our community remains together so we can speak up about these issues. I want others, others in the state to have their voices here. And I would like to support competitiveness in the new districts to and for competitive districts and make sure communities are listening to. It, uh, we need a candidate that must listen to a diverse group. We await their decisions and votes seriously. This is like, very important to, to make our democracy stronger. Thank you so much for your time. I'm appreciate. Thank you. Our next speaker is Maria Romero. Maria, can you unmute yourself? And we'll just uh, let anybody who is joining us uh, right now know that uh, we will send you a request to unmute yourself. We are trying to list the next 10 speakers in the chat, and then I am trying to announce the speakers as we go. Uh, and so if, if you can unmute yourself when we send you the request, uh, that would help speed up the process. I don't see Maria Romero, but uh, we have, it looks like Nelson Morgan is back. Nelson, can you hear us? Our next speaker is Carol Cherry. Carol, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. 
Okay, my name is Carol Cherry. I live in Gilbert. I'm in that little pink section that's right below the green. That, right, that little sliver. We're slivered in between, uh, you know, that's three districts right there. The brown is uh, on the right. So that you can see five different districts in Gilbert. The town of Gilbert is a close-knit community with a small town feel. The new map would break us into five separate districts, which goes against the committee's goal of keeping districts compact to accurately represent communities of interest who live and work together. The recent draft has a few blocks of uh, Northwest Gilbert lumped in with downtown Mesa. An, uh, another small slice of Northwest Gilbert extends from my slice goes almost 30 miles to Ahwatukee. And then there's a third tiny section of North Gilbert that goes into East Mesa, that, that brown tan section there. In my case, my house, my church, my school, most of the places where I do business would all be in different districts. Many people before me have said this exact same thing. Splintering Gilbert into five districts means that our interests will be vastly underrepresented. Um, underrepresented. This absolutely goes against the Arizona Constitution. Gilbert has about half of the population of Mesa, yet Mesa is divided into only two districts while Gilbert is splintered into five. That does not give Gilbert citizens fair representation. I would also ask that you keep Gilbert in one congressional district with Mesa and Queen Creek to preserve our community interests. CD5 should not go into Pinal County. I respectfully request that the commission follow the Arizona Constitution when drawing districts and keep the Gilbert community whole. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Tyler Farnsworth. Mr. Farnsworth, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Madam Chair and Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to address the Commission and for the efforts and time you have put into the draft maps thus far. Certainly not an easy task. My name is Tyler Farnsworth. I grew up, went to school, and currently live in the 85296 zip code, which is in the town of Gilbert. LD draft map 10.2 splits Gilbert into five different legislative districts, as has been said today. Our high school community, Gilbert High, will be split into four different legislative districts. And this draft splits the 85296 zip code into three different legislative districts and two different congressional districts. This map places my home into the new LD12 as a part of that long panhandle, which will include South Tempe and Ahwatukee. This completely separates me from my entire community and removes our downtown Gilbert Heritage District from the rest of Gilbert. My faith community, my children's school community, and my business community will all be split in this current draft map. Our community has shared interests and the way this current map is created disenfranchises those interests. Please split Gilbert at Baseline Road South and Arizona Avenue East. Please keep these new LDs contiguous and respect our faith and education communities. Also, this congressional draft map version 7.1, Gilbert is included in the new District 4 that includes Tempe, parts of Scottsdale, and Ahwatukee. Please consider splitting at the natural dividing line of the US 60 freeway and west, and west to McQueen Road, keeping Gilbert together. Please revisit the way you split up Gilbert, use south of Baseline, east of Arizona Avenue to maintain proper adherence to keep our heritage district and key Gilbert communities together. Thank you for all your efforts. And it looks like Mr. Nelson Morgan is unmuted and uh, ready to speak. If you want to try to speak again, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan, are you on the line? Okay, we will go next to Maria Romero. Ms. Ms. Romero, are you on the line? Ms. Romero, can you hear us? We can hear you. Please proceed. Okay. okay, buenas tardes o buenos días. Mi nombre es María Romero y vivo en el área de la San Islop, entre la 9 Avenida y la Hatcher. Um, yo es, estoy contento, estoy contenta de que mi distrito va a ser de parte del número 2, of, de que, bueno, sí. Y yo he trabajado en el... Señora María, disculpe, no estaba yo presente aquí enfrente para que me escuchara. 
Uh, ¿Puede repetirlo para poder traducir a los demás? Ok. Uh, buenas tardes. Sorry, sorry, everyone. I asked her to repeat herself so I can translate from the beginning. Ok. Buenas okay, tardes. Continue. Mi nombre es María Romero. Good Vivo afternoon. En... My name is María Romero. Uh -huh. Vivo en el, en el área de la de Hatcher, en el distrito de eh, mis avenidas, mi aven uh, perdón. Vivo en el área de la Sanidad, en la Hatcher y la Nueva Avenida. Estoy contenta. Vivo en la Sanidad uh, section, uh, uh, siete, dijo siete avenida. Nueve avenida. Nueve avenida. Ajá. En la Hatcher. Nueve avenida en Hatcher. Sí. Estoy contenta de que va a ser parte del Distrito 2. Yo, y yo he trabajado en el Hilton por uh, 22 años. Usualmente los, los oficiales no se, no se enfocan en las familias trabajadoras como la mía. Permítame, déjame regresar. Uh -huh. uh, I'm very happy to be living in District 2. Oh I worked in Hilton for 22 years. Usually officials don't really worry about families like mine. Working families. And the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, pero en el distrito competitivo, como, como mi distrito, como todos hace que los, que los políticos que, que escuchen, a, que escuchen a, a todos sus, sus distritos que quieren ganar. Repita la última parte, los políticos. Oh los políticos los. no escuchan a todos en sus distritos que quieren ganar. Ok, uh, usually the, my district, uh, the politicians don't, don't listen um, in my district when they want to win races. Ok, gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. The next three people speakers are Nicholas Collins, Jeffrey Tucker, and then Anna Sanchez Navarro. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Mr. Tucker, please proceed. Um, Nick is trying to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Collins, please proceed. Okay. Hi, my name is Nick Collins. I live in Albuquerque, just west of Chandler since uh, 2003. I've lived here. Uh, I remember when the legislature used to draw the districts and my congressional district was made of Albuquerque connected to Scottsdale by a thin strip across Tempe, uh, obviously somewhat gerrymandered. So I really appreciate the work that this independent recommission, uh, redistricting commission is doing and undertaking uh, uh, to make districts fair and competitive. Making these districts fair and competitive was part of the language of Prop 106 in 2000 that created the IRC uh, and also part of the Voting Rights Act. Uh, I think that the competitive district should be the primary goal when drawing our new maps Uh, we just need to look at our most recent election to see how competitive our state is. One third are independents. Uh, again, I'm glad uh, for the work that this commission is doing, and I want to stress the importance of keeping districts competitive. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Jeffrey Tucker, followed by Anna Sanchez Navarro. Mr. Thank Tucker? you. Hello, commissioners. My name is Jeffrey Tucker, and I join you from South Tempe. I've lived here for eight years and I work in North Chandler. And as an Ahwatukee property owner, I've been a taxpayer in the Kyrene School District for over 15 years. I first want to thank you for the approved LD draft map, recognizing and representing the Kyrene School District so well. You finally made the school district whole within a single LD by including the Lone Butte precinct into LD 12. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to raise three major concerns that I see with the draft map. First, as a Tempe resident, my small city has 204,000 residents. It could actually have a single district of its own, yet the cu current map splits us up into four new districts, which it seems really only that two districts are warranted, an urban North Tempe district and a suburban South Tempe district representing the neighborhoods below Southern Avenue. My next issue with the draft maps concerns the area where I work, North Chandler. This is a highly concentrated Hispanic and Latino area of Chandler that has been split from the new District 13. This Hispanic community of interest population has now been lumped into LD12 when instead it really seems to make more sense to extend the new District 13 northward and remove the LD12 arm that was created. 
I had prepared comments about the LD12 arm or panhandle or finger or whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, it sounds like everyone kind of hates this thing, so please remove it. Um, in summary, my three uh, comments about changes are one, please split Tempe into only two districts at Southern Avenue. Two, please keep the Latino community of Chandler whole in LD13. And three, get rid of the panhandle. Thank you so much for hearing my suggestions. Thank you, host, for doing a wonderful uh, job. And further, thank you so much for the tireless work and the many miles you have each traveled for the past year, commissioners. I appreciate your efforts in making these maps fair, balanced, and representative of the Arizona that I live in. Thank you. The next speaker is Ana Sanchez Navarro. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Um, my name is Ana Sanchez Navarro, and I live off of 32nd Street in Union Hills. My community of interest includes the Desert Ridge area and does not include the Sunny Slope area. Your map has shifted my district to the south, and that presents issues for me and my community. It is not competitive, and it does not represent my community of interest, and my voices or my voice and that of my community are being crushed, which is not democratic. I never travel south of Thunderbird into the Sunny Slope area. The crime rate there is very high, and I am having a lot of anxiety over the thought that crime rate is going to increase in my neighborhood with a shifting south of my district. The Sunny Slope community is very different from the suburban families that live north of Thunderbird, with completely different values and priorities, making it very difficult for legislators to effectively serve our constituents. I am pleading with you to please move up the southern boundary of the proposed LD2 map up to Thunderbird and the northern boundary to extend further north to include the area north of the 101. On the west, I would like to request the boundary to extend further, at least to 63rd Avenue. This is because my doctors, hospitals, and many church friends live in this area. We would feel very disenfranchised in all the efforts that we have put forth to ensure proper representation of our values. Therefore, regarding the pro proposed Congressional District 1 map, I would like to request that the area between K Creek Road and I-17 be included in CD1, please. I am okay with the rest of the boundaries for CD1. And I thank you for all the hard work you have done and the many iterations of this um, of these maps. I know that it's not easy and I really sincerely appreciate that you will um, effectively issue fair maps in the end. And um, I would li like to ask that you follow please the Arizona constitution when you draw this, um, this maps. And, um, and I thank you again. Um, thank you. Our next speaker, we're, we're moving back up the list because we uh, were able to find him, is Jawahar Abbas. Mr. Abbas, can you hear us? There you are. Jawahar? Yeah. Hi, please proceed. It looks like we lost the speaker. So let's move to the next speaker, Steve Hexler, followed by Paula Feely, followed by Noella Kuntz. Steve Hexler, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, I'm Steve Hexler. I came to Arizona as a youth, lived in most of my life in Mesa before moving to Gold Canyon early last year. My disappointment in the maps was compounded when I logged into this event and asked me what part of the state I wanted to talk about. I consider Gold Canyon at the end of Metro Phoenix, but these maps don't reflect that. Three of the constitutional requirements have not only been ignored, but have been ignored blatantly so. First one, geographically compact and contiguous. I'm being placed in a rural county, 200 miles from top to bottom, nearly 200 miles from side to side. Communities of interest. Residents of Gold Canyon Apache Junction have community of interest with each other and with East Mesa. This is where we shop go to church, get involved in community events. My wife and I are 10 miles from Maricopa County. We cross that line at least once each week. Three, respect for city and county lines. The district cuts right through Apache Junction, which otherwise would be the largest city in the district. It cuts right through the school district, one of the largest in LD7. It encompasses five different counties, only one of which lies completely within the district. Pinnell County is split into four legislative districts. Yes, the constitutional requirements have a qualifier to the extent practicable, but it looks like one would have to go out of their way to miss the constitutional requirements as much as they have been in, in drawing the LD7 boundaries. If I wanted to test the limits of the law, this is the map I would have drawn. 
If we want to adhere to the letter and the spirit of the law, keeping Apache Junction intact and putting it along with Gold Canyon and proposed LD-15 is optimal and practical. Putting us in the new LD-15 is less optimal, but still practical. Even putting us in a gerrymandered LD-17 comes closer to meeting the requirements of LD-7. I'm a numbers person and a map junkie and realize trade-offs have to be made. I just can't fathom how severing our community from Metro Phoenix and chopping up Pinell County and scattering the parts to distant points meets the explicit constitutional requirements. Thank you. Our next speaker is Paula Feeney, followed by Noella Coons. Paula, can you hear us? Paula, we can't hear you. Let's move to Noella Kuntz. Noella, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Oh, all right. Hi, my name is Noella Kuntz, and I'm a retired pharmacist, and I live in the Maricopa County. Uh, I live in the North Scottsdale near Pinnacle Peak, uh, which is uh, mainly single residential. Uh, it's a serb. It's you know, a suburb with all the unique qualities that other people have mentioned. And uh, I do find that um, Scottsdale, Cave Creek, Carefree, Fountain Hills are where I do about 90% of my dining shopping and, and I worship there as well. Uh, the regar regarding the current draft, the Scottsdale community is split and I don't believe that should be correct. Um, it should remain whole except for possibly the southern part. Uh, the western border I'd like to see as um, using the natural boundary of Scottsdale Road from about Carefree Highway running down to Osborne. Those parts um, south of Osborne or whatever is the area of Scottsdale that I would be you know, willing to give up basically because it is a bit different than from the northern area. McCormick Ranch, Ganey Ranch, they're all distinctly Scottsdale communities and should be part of that LD3. Um, we should not have that little part that brings in some of the uh, Phoenix uh, urban areas. I don't believe that that uh, has the same uh, type of uh, community as we do and it would not be represented as well. So I respectfully ask the commission to consider my comments and I thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speakers are Jeffrey Apodaca, Trevor Johnson and Amber Watson. Jeffrey, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. I currently live in LD23 in Scottsdale, uh, east of Hayden and west of the 101. And under the proposed uh, legislative and congressional maps, I will be in District 8 and Congressional District 1. I feel being included in LD8 would put together two communities with conflicting interests. Uh, Tempe, which will primarily make up District 8, is largely urban. My community is entirely suburban and therefore it has different priorities and interests for which we need representation. Uh, furthermore, my friends and family travel and do business seldom in Tempe and Central Phoenix. Similarly, Congressional District 1 will include urban parts of Central Phoenix, so therefore it is not a community of interest for that reason. Ultimately, this will decrease competitiveness and throw together two dissimilar communities of interest. In summary, the parts of Scottsdale east of Hayden and currently in LD23 should not be included in District 8 and the boundaries of Congressional District 1 should be moved further east, both to better reflect the community. Uh, thank you very much. Our next speakers are Trevor Johnson, Amber Watson, and then Paula Feely is back. Trevor? Hello? Hello? I'm... Yeah, Hello. Please, we can hear you. Please proceed. Good. Hello, my name is Trevor Johnson, and I'm speaking this morning to represent North Scottsdale from DC Ranch. I agree with the concerns of Lori Gray, Joe Junker, Nancy Ordowski, and Craig Stephen, as well as others who have spoken before me. 
I'll ask the commission to observe that the handful of speakers who look, spoke against us were not residents of current LD23 or Scottsdale, while we are all here to represent our home. It's common knowledge that Scottsdale is a unique, tight-knit community of interest. We share our schools, we share our parks, our shopping centers, we share our churches. We do not share the schools, parks, and shopping centers, or churches of Phoenix. We do not consider Desert Ridge or I-17 part of our community. That is why we are here today, to protest the legislative division of Scottsdale and integration of Scottsdale with other cities such as Phoenix. It's more than just our values, our culture, and our community. LT23 has been called its own state within Arizona by political experts because of our unique electorate. Scottsdale is a unique community with its own legislative demands. We are not politically homogenous with the rest of Arizona. I'm speaking up this morning because Scottsdale, as Americans and as Arizonans, deserves to be represented by people who represent them. On behalf of Scottsdale, I implore this committee to recognize the legislative border on Scottsdale Road. We do not go to I-17 or Desert Ridge. That is not part of our unique, beautiful community. Please keep our community together so that we may stay politically engaged and move our beloved LD and our beautiful state into a brighter future. Thank you. Thank you. We have Amber Watson and then Paula Feely. Amber, can you hear us? Yeah, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Please okay. proceed. Perfect. Okay, thank you everybody for the lovely comments. Trevor Johnson, that is a tough act to follow. Um, so again, uh, uh, my name is Amber Watson. I am a retired nurse. So I live and play in the family friendly Desert Ridge area. And I have to say, I agree, uh, agree with Trevor, Desert Ridge and Scottsdale really are not um, homogenous areas. So Desert Ridge is family friendly. I live specifically on High Street. So that's my home. It caters more to urban, vibrant, young professionals. Um, and in my opinion, it's in stark contrast to the areas that kind of want to get jammed in. Rio Verde um, is one. I consider that more of an equestrian, um, active adult community. Um, North Scottsdale is a little more elderly as well as Fountain Hills. Um, there's more retired versus young professionals. So it's my opinion that the representatives kind of need to um, stay with their unique communities because they kind of have a feel already for what they need and artificially combining these areas. Um, and, and it's something like 35 miles wide. I think that's a bit much. Um, it's already hard enough for the representatives to do their job. So we have contrasting cultures, contrasting needs. I don't think putting us all together would be in anybody's best interest. So again, referencing the proposed district map, please, please consider smaller, more manageable, more cohesive areas, ensuring that we, the people, are fully and properly represented. Represented. So thank you so much for your time and your consideration of my thoughts. Just say call. Calling. Thank you. Our next speaker is Paula Feely, followed by Nelson Morgan and Suzanne Mead. Hi, this is Paula. Can you hear me now? Yes, Paula, please proceed. Okay. Hello, Madam Chair and Commissioners. My name is Paula Feely, and I've lived in Chandler for 10 years near Alma School in Germain. I've been looking at your 10.0 legislative district map, and I would like to comment about the plans regarding Chandler and the surrounding areas. My first comment is that I would like to see the southwest part of Chandler combined with District 12. The population in my part of Chandler is aging, and the area includes the Akateok community and the large retirement community of Sun Lakes. In general, the people in the area are highly educated and form a community of interest that has more in common with the people of Ahwatukee than with the people of downtown Chandler. Another comment about the 10.0 map is that Chandler is split into three separate legislative districts, 9, 12, and 13. I realize that Chandler is too big to be a single district, but I hope it can be only two districts if possible. One way this can be done is if the arm of D12 yeah, he's not there, so it's still open. through North Chandler into Gilbert. Oh, well, it's open. There's nobody there. Okay. He is not in town. Okay, okay, so see if Becky can open it for Becky. us. Incorporating Sun Lakes into D12 instead would keep the districts more compact, contiguous, and competitive. This change would also keep the concentrated Latino population areas of North Chandler, Downtown Chandler, and Sunshine Valley Mobile Home Park in the same district. 
I hope that some of these changes can be made in order to ensure competitiveness and maintain communities of interest so every group can have fair representation in our state government. I appreciate all you have done to create these maps and I look forward to seeing the coming iterations. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Nelson Morgan followed by Suzanne Mead. Nelson, I, can you hear us? Yeah, can you I hear can, me? I, can you hear I can me? Hear, I can hear you. Can you hear we me? Can hear both I of hear you. Nelson Yay. Morgan is going to speak first, please. Oh, who are you talking oh, hi, hi. to? Cool. Suzanne, okay. we will call you in just a minute. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Okay. It's been a while. Okay, so uh, thank you uh, to all of you, Chair Newberg and commissioners especially. Um, uh, I'm Nelson Morgan. I'm a retired academic living in Phoenix. I'd like to comment on the idea of partisan groupings as a community of interest and why it makes no sense, despite sometimes being suggested in recent meetings. Other speakers are elaborating on the more traditional meanings of communities of interest, as in patterns of shopping, work, and recreation, but I'd like to focus on a simple numerical reality. Even in the most partisan areas of the state, there are still many voters who prefer the minority party. General elections in a 70-30 district entail little suspense, and yet all voters still hope for representatives who will improve conditions in our state. We wanna support communities of interest in the aspects that unite us, not divide us. Our concerns over issues like water, education, and healthcare. And these are best supported in competitive districts in which politicians must appeal to voters beyond their base. To the commissioners, I really appreciate the very difficult task that you've taken on. I strongly urge you to eschew the use of partisan identity as a substitute for communities of interest and rather to maximize the number of competitive districts. You can do this while conforming with actual communities of interest. I'd really like to spend my retirement in a state where we have learned to live peacefully with our differences, given all the challenges that we have in common. Fair and competitive district boundaries will aid this. Thank you so much for all of your efforts. Thank you. Now, Suzanne Mead, please proceed. Yes, I assume you can hear me now. <laughs> Good yes, morning. Good morning. My name is Suzanne Mead from Carefree and Cave Creek Community in Northern Maricopa. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. To start, I appreciate, I wanna let you know that I appreciate our new C C1 Congressional District. However, I have concerns that the new legislative D3 district does not meet several criteria, specifically geographic barriers, community of interest, and political balance. First, I'm grateful to the commission uh, that they have agreed to separate our district from Yavapai County. However, I am distressed by their decision to include carefree in yet another rural district characterized by expansive wilderness that is separated from us by a mountain range. This makes no sense given our reliance on Phoenix for most of our health, retail, and entertainment services. Carefree and the adjoining town of Cave Creek are northern suburbs of Phoenix and should not be joined with rural points east of the McDowell Mountains. Second, my community of interest extends from Carefree and Cave Creek down along the Tatum and Cave Creek Road corridors to Thunderbird Road. This takes me to my doctor, shopping at Desert Ridge and the Costco and entertainment at MIM. This community also shares my concerns about sustainable water and urban development. Third, the proposed LD3 favors one party by 20.4%, well beyond the targeted four to 7% vote spread that the commission agreed on earlier in this season. Finally, I believe that voters of both parties benefit when districts are balanced. If there are too many safe districts, and I count 24 in this draft, draft map, millions of voters in our state, regardless of party, will have little chance of electing candidates of their choice. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Thank you. Our next speaker is Don Amadin. Yeah, good morning. Don, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Um, can you hear me? Yes, please yeah. proceed. My name is Don. I live in uh, 2615 East Greenway Road in, in North Phoenix. Um, I've lived in Arizona for nine years. Uh, I'm a, a transplant from New York City. That's where I grew up. Uh, one of the reasons I like the legislative district too and the way uh, it's been drawn it, drawn up is it creates a diverse yet connected community. I like. I think diversity is important because it it, it creates a, a strong and competitive um, reason for um, legislators to pay attention to the to the people within that district, um, and and it gets everyone's uh, needs covered. Um, 
I also think the way the, the lines are drawn up uh, just makes sense. I go down often to Sunny Slope area for the to the John Lincoln Hospital for my medical care and um, and for shopping. So I'm I'm glad that that uh, you chose not to divide the North um, North Mountain uh, community and, and keep Sunny Slope in District Two. Um, really appreciate your uh, time and, and patience with this. Thank you. The next three speakers will be Nancy Erdowski, Yvonne Cahill, and then Mary Jean Fincher. Nancy, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, thank you. I appreciate this time to be able to speak with all of you. Um, I live in Fountain Hills and fortunately or unfortunately, it's a community that definitely um, connects with Scottsdale, but we also um, are a community that um, needs to be taken into account with Scottsdale and not to be um, set aside because there isn't any other communities around us that we fit with. Scottsdale is a really important part for all of us in the um, Fountain Hills and Rio Verde areas. It, one of the things I haven't heard anybody mention is the fact that um, our hospitals and our medical care, most of which takes place in the Scottsdale region. I really see that our western border should be Scottsdale Road. I rarely am um, on the other side of Scottsdale Road for either social or um, uh, recreational or medical care. Um, I'd like to see our district go south. Um, I know that a good portion of it looks like it's being taken into eight, but we are a community in um, those parts in that region of Scottsdale. Fountain Hill School or Fountain Hill students often uh, participate in the Scottsdale School District. Uh, rarely am I on the west side of Scottsdale Road and never have an anthem um, unless I'm driving up to the northern part of Arizona and those trips haven't even been made in the last four or five years. This is my community, and I know that we do have to have compromises, and that I'm asking that you consider uh, the boundaries and keep us as close as possible to this particular community. One of my other concerns is uh, CD1. Um, Phoenix is a urban area and doesn't um, meet any of the community of needs. We're not there very, very often. Um, it's a young tech government people, uh, employed people, and um, it's important that. Thank you. The next speaker is Yvonne Cahill, followed by Mary Jean Fincher. Yvonne? Yes, this is Yvonne Cahill. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to hear my testimony. My name is Yvonne Cahill. I'm a former registered nurse and currently work as a realtor. I'm an immigrant who came to the USA in 1995. I came here legally after 10 years of applications and work to become a citizen. So I take my vote very seriously. I live in Scottsdale in McCormick Ranch. I go to church in Scottsdale. I shop in Scottsdale. I play sports in Scottsdale. I also attend sporting events such as the Phoenix Open and spring training. My doctors are all located in the Scottsdale corridor for the medical corridor. I'm asking you, please keep Scottsdale as one. Scottsdale has natural boundaries, which is one of the criteria for you to consider in the Arizona constitution. We are governed by one city council. We have one school district, the Suds, and the current maps cut Scottsdale into three pieces. And I can't understand how this is really um, a, adhering to the Constitution. Um, it also cuts HOAs in half. And um, we, do, we do not go to Desert Ridge. We really do not go to Fountain Hills or Rio Verde to shop. Or, and we definitely don't go anywhere over to, as far as the, the I-17. And I would say there is a priority of communities of interest in the Constitution. In fact, it, and um, if you look at Arizona Constitution Article 4, Part 2, Section 114, Number F, it talks about the fact that a competitive district should not 
be created over a deterrent of the other goals, which is communities of interest. I'm also very concerned about what you've done to Congressional District 6. It goes way, way too far west and too far south. So I'm asking that you please consider my testimony and keep Scottsdale as one district if population is Thank you. The next speaker is Mary Jane Fincher, followed by Roman Ullman, followed by Deborah Howard. Hello, my name is Mary Jane Fincher, and I live in Paradise Valley, east of Phoenix. I'm pleased that the draft congressional map puts me in a highly competitive district. My current congressperson is in a safe seat and apparently sees no value in meeting with constituents in town halls or other open events. He meets with his donors and his base of voters, but that's it. I look forward to having a congressperson who needs to appeal to and represent voters outside of his or her party. I urge the commission to maximize the number of competitive districts in the state, which is better for voters and for democracy. I have two concerns about the process of choosing these draft maps. I'm very troubled by the adoption of Legislative District 17 in Tucson. When the proposal for this district was introduced and discussed by the commissioners on October 21st, it was referred to as a citizen map at least a dozen times. I have to wonder if the discussion would have gone differently if the commissioners had known it was not a citizen map, but rather a Pima County Republican Party drawn map. In addition, the email from the Southern Arizona Leadership Council proposing LD17 asks explicitly for a Republican district in Pima County. This is gerrymandering, pure and simple. Please do not allow naked partisanship to dress up as a community of interest. Second, how can it be that the draft map has the same number of Latino majority districts as in 2011, when the Latino population has grown significantly in the past 10 years? The commission seems to go into executive session whenever compliance with the Voting Rights Act comes up and the public is thereby kept in the dark as to how the commission is approaching VRA compliance. The commission is treating the public as, as an adversary as far as VRA compliance is concerned, rather than a constituency. Thank you for all your work and for listening to my concerns today. Thank you. Our next speaker is Roman Ullman, followed by Deborah Howard. Hello, commissioners. My name is Roman Ullman. Uh, I am a chairman of several senior consuls, and I would just like to uh, make this observation. First of all, uh, at the beginning of the century, the voters of Arizona created a commission to draw up districts, and they did so because they were tired of the gerrymandering. And they also spelled out how those districts should be done. Committees should not be split up. Districts should be compact. Groups of interest should be kept together. Districts should be competitive. I live in East Mesa for 23 years, and District 15 on your map. Uh, and frankly, East Mesa has nothing to do with Pinal County. And I will tell you right now that we are an urban area. Pinal County is a rural area. The interests of Pinal County and the needs of Pinal County have nothing to do with East Mesa. If you have issues about transportation or issues about water, their representative, if they live in Mesa, would not understand that. They need a representative that lives in Pinal County. Uh, another thing, too, that bothers me is that if you elect a representative from that particular area and the person lives in East Mesa, then he's not going to care to go into Pinal County if he gets his votes out of East Mesa. Another thing that bothers me is in the boundaries that you've drawn up, for District 15, you are going all the way from the uh, mountains, uh, the um, Goldfield Mountains, all the way to the Santan Mountains. You may not notice this, but there are no north-south uh, roads that that drive through that entire entire area. You know, you you go past the airport, you go into those areas. How in the heck are you going to interact physically together? So I would ask you very, very much, keep the areas in interest 
areas, you know, make uh, East Mesa be in Mesa. Thank you. Our next speaker is Deborah Howard. Deborah, can you unmute yourself? Our next speaker is Nancy Norton, followed by Mitzi Cowell. Nancy, can you hear us? I can hear you. I can't unmute myself. You're unmuted. We can hear you, Nancy. Okay. I am a full-time resident of Oral Valley. I dispute the drawing of LD17, which is neither compact, fair, or competitive, with Democrats at 45.03% and Republicans at 654.97%. I have not lived in a competitive district as a 17-year full-time resident who votes every election. Former LD11, silence my voice. Proposed LD17 reflects one party choosing the voters to win. A perfect description of gerrymandering instead of voters selecting who represents them, the purpose of voting. This outcome affects the future legislation. The commission is charged with creating fair and competitive competitive being a priority districts, which brings about the vote. This is not reflected in the drawing of LD17. My vote is silenced as it has been for 17 years. The commission chose five members without access granted to special interests and outside party affiliates. Please do your jobs as you should in-house with input from voters only. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mitzi Cowell, followed by Patricia Hale, Shanna Leonard, and Mike Weingarten. Mitzi, can you hear us? Okay, Mitzi, can you hear us now? Okay, Mitzi, we'll come back to you. We're going to move to Patricia Hale. Patricia, can you hear us? Okay, we'll move to, I see, Shanna Leonard. Shannon, Shanna, can Hello? you hear us? Yes, can you hear please, me? We can. Thank you. Please proceed. Hi. Um, thanks to the members of the commission for spending this lovely day listening to us instead of being out enjoying the beautiful weather outside. My name is Shanna Leonard. I'm a citizen of Southern Arizona for over five decades. I'm a mom, an IT professional, and run a small business in the Tucson metro area. My first request is Santa Cruz County, where a good friend lived and worked as a social worker until he passed away. Why was this majority Hispanic? district not included in the voting rights analysis of counties? And when will the public get an analysis of this county and also a voting rights analysis of the new maps so that we can ensure that uh, the constitution is followed? My second question, the new maps divide this tiny and compact county of Santa Cruz into two legislative districts, as well as Green Valley. Do county boundaries and city boundaries matter to the commission? Santa Cruz and Green Valley should be kept whole. My third request is that the commission honor my community of interest. My parents moved to Pima County in the 1960s. My family has lived here for six decades. Since I've been a child, I've lived in five districts represented in the current LD map from 16, 17, 18, 20, and 21. I have friends and family throughout Arizona from Mesa to San Manuel, Bisbee, Green Valley, and Nogales. Arizona is my community of interest. Competitive districts ensure that all points of view in Arizona have a voice. Arizona is closely bound together by more than where we buy our cars. If the commission only focuses on the tiniest communities, we divide ourselves as if we live in feudal fiefdoms. Members of the commission, don't you think that Arizona politics is already divided enough? 
if we can't join together to face the big issues in our state, which need bipartisan solutions and, comp and cooperation of Arizona, all communities will suffer. This year in Arizona, water reservoirs are at an all time low, threatening farming and housing developments and climate change causes wildfires, which can eliminate an entire neighborhood, a community of interest. I hope that all members of the commission also hold Arizona as their community of interest. Thank you. The next speaker is Mitzi Cowell. Mitzi, can you hear us now? Yes, thank you. Thank you all for the challenge, challenging and I hope fulfilling work that you're doing for us. I was born and raised in Tucson and hope to live the rest of my life here. I'm asking you to use map version 9.0 and not 9.2. I currently live in East Central Tucson in Gabby Gifford's old CD. I'm bringing up Gabby's story because it says some things about Tucson, Pima County, Arizona, and America. When Gabby was shot by an extremist that horrible day in 2011, she was holding Congress on your corner. And some of the people killed on that day were Republican constituents there to talk, about, talk to her because they could. Gabby was a beloved example of the kind of leadership possible in a competitive district where legislators have to be accountable and responsive to all of their constituents. But her constituents were examples of engaged voters who could trust that they would be heard despite ideology. The proposed LD17 is the opposite and it's not necessary. We know that partisan districts are unavoidable in some areas because of factors like population density and geography, but to intentionally create a partisan district just because some people say they want one goes against the whole reason we created the IRC. Constitutionally, version 9.2 violates the goal of competitive districts as well as goals C, D, and E. We all know the damage that political polarization and isolation is doing to our country. I used to live in the democratic bubble of downtown Tucson. It's comfortable to be around folks you agree with all the time, but that's not how America is or how democracy works. I'm a Democrat with Republican friends, some of them in Marana and Vail, by the way. We all love our kids, our dogs. We all want opportunity and fairness. We have more in common than we think. Intentionally twisting an LD around a population center and across an uninhabited mountain range just so some people can stay in an ideological bubble just feeds the disease of polarization. We have a perfectly reasonable alternative in map version 9.0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mike Weingarten, followed by Lisa Wolf, followed by Linda Dugan. Mike, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, uh, so hello everybody and thank you for this opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Mike Weingarten. I live in the residential Midtown area of Tucson, about a, about a mile southeast of the University of Arizona campus. Um, I want to speak about concerns I have about uh, the legislative district uh, draft map uh, here in the Tucson area. I, I too am very much opposed to how District 17 has been defined really for two sets of reasons. Um, the, the first is due to the process that was followed and the characteristics that that district would have. But the second is that uh, there's a spillover effect from defining uh, District 17 that way in a fourth configuration that that has on my neighborhood and the rest of Midtown Tucson. Um, so for that first set of reasons, um, as other people have said, uh, District 17's boundaries come from a partisan submitted map it violates the constitutional goals of compactness, contiguousness. It fails to follow the geographic boundaries of the Catalina Mountains. And it's manufactured to include uh, disparate communities for the sole purpose of creating a safe Republican district when we know a very competitive district has been shown to be practicable. As far as the spillover consequences, let me first state that my neighborhood's community of interest is Midtown. Uh, the draft map would have Midtown Tucson unnecessarily fractured into three separate districts. My own neighborhood of Broadmoor Broadway Village would be in District 21 in a slice of Midtown neighborhoods that would be separated from the rest of Midtown and instead joined with rural areas in the southern part of the state all the way down to the Mexican border. And that's just not our community of interest and it's not conducive, I don't think, to effective representation for us. So I also would request that the commission go back to LD test map version 9.0, which uh, Commissioner Lerner proposed. It solves all the problems I've talked about, the compactness, contiguousness, respect for geographic boundaries, and the legitimate competitiveness. Thank you. The next speaker is Patricia Hale. Patricia, can you hear us?
after Patricia, it is Lisa Wolf, followed by Linda Dugan. Lisa, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Uh, my name is Lisa Wolf. I've lived in uh, Tucson for 67 years, so I've watched it grow from a little town of 60,000 people to what its current um, metropolitan metropolitan area of many hundreds of thousands more. Uh, District 17 under the 9.0 maps is compact, contiguous, uh, competitive, and includes a community of interest that we all respect. Uh, Casas Adobes, Oro Valley, and Catalina Foothills are natural extensions of Tucson. I grew up in, in the central part of Tucson and then went to school at uh, Canyon del Oro, which at that time was the northern most place you could go in Tucson. Um, I, at the time I lived south of Orange Grove and I do lots of things in all of those areas, Oro Valley and uh, the foothills and um, Casas Adobes. Uh, vail and Tanca Verde are not part of anything I do. And as all the speakers before me have said, this was created specifically to give the Republicans a safe district. And that is not one of the, the um, uh, criteria for the maps. The 9.0 version satisfies all of the criteria and is a much more compact and contiguous district and should be uh, contained that way rather than this gerrymandered district that speaks that selects out Republicans specifically to give them a voice when they already have a voice in all in a lot of the other Pima County districts. Uh, that they have significant voice. They don't need a, a district specifically configured for them. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Linda Dugan. Linda, can you hear us? Linda? After Linda is Richard Ulrey. Richard, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Yeah, my name is Rich Ulrey. I live in the Sarita Green Valley community of Quail Creek in Southern Arizona. I thank the commissioners for your service on this commission. I understand the difficulty of your job. The communities of Sarita, Green Valley, and Quail Creek are retirement communities with shopping and commercial interests that are contained together. The legislative map inappropriately splits the town of Saarita into two separate districts, despite our commonality. We have significant mining interests in our community, and the Green Valley Quail Creek area has been act appropriately included with Cho uh, Cochise County in Legislative District 19, but most of Saarita has been placed in District 21, which shares little interest with our community. Uh, Southeast Arizona and Cochise County also has mining and cattle ranching economy, and Saarita should be combined with Green Valley and Quail Creek and placed entirely in Legislative District 19. In the congressional map, the commission has confusingly taken our community completely away from the common interest we share with Southeast Arizona and Cochise County and placed us in District 7 on the opposite side of the state, rather than the uh, much more appropriate District 6. The commission should use the same reasoning evidenced in the legislative map and align our community with District 6 in the congressional map. District 7 is driven by farming rather than mining and cattle ranching interests we share with District 6. Please move the entire Saarita, Green Valley, and Quail Creek community from District 7 into District 6. To offset this population shift, I would recommend that you move the Casa Grande area into District 7. It shares a similar farming economy with District 7. Making these changes will also further the objective of compactness in the congressional maps for District 6 and 7. I thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Linda Dukin is our next speaker. Linda, we can we see that you're unmuted. Can you speak? Okay, Linda, we can't hear you. Maybe you want to uh, log back in. Our, the next speaker after that is going to be Betty Harris, followed by Carol Mallon, followed by Roy Verdery. Betty? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay. 
Uh, thank you for this opportunity to give citizen input. Uh, I live in the south end of the Tucson Mountains in the house that my late husband and I built almost 50 years ago. I'm retired from teaching at Pima College. I am an active volunteer with Pima County Parks and with Tumacoc Mission. I hope to return soon to the Nature Conservancy and Reading Seed as a volunteer. Um, COVID shut those down. Enough about me. Um, I asked to speak because I am unhappy with the form of the latest uh, legislative district map 10 in Southern Arizona particularly. I know very little about the Phoenix metropolitan area, although I listened to a lot of stuff about that just now, sorry. Um, there seems to be little attention to meet the important goal of Proposition 106 to create fair and competitive districts. I realize there are five other criteria you must attempt to satisfy and it's difficult to balance all. However, I strongly disagree with the idea that being registered Republican constitutes a community of interest and indeed that flies in the face of fair and competitive as a number of recent speakers have just addressed. Maybe a little bit of this is going to be repetitive. The currently strangely shaped District 17 not only seems to form, form, be formed to create a Republican majority district, but it causes unnecessary distortions in nearby districts. Tucson Estates is added to a district which extends to America. Santa Cruz County, as mentioned before, is split. Uh, to name but two, whereas map nine, as mentioned before, 9.0 creates compact, continuous, competitive <laughs> District 17, not divided by large mountain ranges. Santa Cruz County is one in, in uh, LD, is in one LD, and Tucson Estates is in a Tucson District LD 20. Lastly, I feel that the commission needs to pay more attention to the maps submitted by the Latino co Coalition. Thank you. Our next speaker is Carol Mellon, followed by Roy Verdery, followed by Linda Dugan, followed by Pete Rio. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hello, commissioners. My name is Carol Malin. I have resided in the Catalina foothills of Tucson since 1989. I am a certified public accountant. My husband is a physician who has spent most of his career teaching at the University of Arizona College of Medicine. Our son grew up in Tucson and graduated from public schools and the University of Arizona. Our son teaches middle school science in the Tucson Unified School District. We are deeply connected to Pima County in Southern Arizona. We reside in a neighborhood that will become part of District 17. The current test map will result in the fragmentation of my community. The map submitted by Mr. Mel results in a ludicrous shape for District 17 and includes parts of town that have nothing to do with the Catalina foothills. It is clearly a gerrymandered map. The district would start in southeastern Pima County and Vail, then snake up to Tanca Verde, go west, cross the foothills, then north to Oro Valley and Marana. These are distinct areas that don't have much to do with each other. We never spend time in Marana, Vail, or Tanca Verde, and rarely make the trek to Oro Valley. This new district is neither geographically compact, nor does it represent communities of interest. The current map has been designed to ensure that a Republican is elected. This violates the constitutional requirement that districts should be competitive. The new District 17 map is not compact nor contiguous. I would like to see District 17 be shaped as proposed in map version 9.0. Regarding the congressional map, the new CD6 and CD7 separate the University of Arizona and 4th Avenue from downtown Tucson. These areas should be contained in the same congressional district as the local population moves between them daily. The streetcar runs both through both areas. The new map also dilutes Latino influence 
which is prohibited by the Federal Voting Rights Act. I would like to see a map that includes these two areas in the same district. The best way to do that is to keep Campbell Avenue as a north-south dividing. Thank you. Our next speaker is Roy Verdery, followed by Linda Dugan, followed by Pete Rios. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Roy Verdery, a retired physician living in Pima County. I'm commenting on final map LD 10.0. We lived in Oro Valley when I was on the faculty of the medical school, and we moved back to Arizona about five years ago to retire here because we love the Sonoran Desert and the ethnic diversity of Arizona. We now live in the Catalina foothills. Our suburban community extends from the foothills north to Oro Valley Hospital and west to Costco on I-10. We almost never go east to Tanca Verde or southeast into the area, which to me is uniquely beautiful horse country. Susan, I'm gonna to have to call you back because I might be on soon, okay? I'll call you back. To me, District 17 in Final Mac 10.0 looks like a Gila monster wrapped around Catalina Foothills where I live with its tail in Morena and its head taking a bite out of District 19. This is the same problem I commented on for draft map eight. District 17 and final map 10.0 is not well drawn. It is not compact and contiguous. It includes uniquely different communities on the West, which we relate to and East, which we almost never visit. And they are ge geographically separated by the Catalina mountains. Moreover to balanced populations, Santa Cruz County gets divided between districts 19 and 21. I also am asking the commission to please use a map like draft map 9.0, which is much better than final map 10.0 from the point of view of the Catalina Foothills community. 10.0 creates two non-competitive districts, while 9.0 com com creates competitive districts. 9.0 also doesn't divide Santa Cruz County. Thank you all for your time and attention and the tremendous effort you're all making as volunteers on the IRC. Thank you. The next speaker is Linda Dugan, followed by Pete Rios. Linda? Linda, we can hear you. Okay. Linda, there doesn't seem to be a uh, something coming from your speaker. Linda, we can't, we can't hear you. <laughs> Linda, can you try again? Okay, our next speaker is Pete Rios. Pete, thank, you for letting me, thank you for letting me say a few words. As a member of the Arizona Latino Coalition, I want to continue advocating for eight majority minority legislative districts versus seven Latino citizen voting age population legislative districts only. I still believe that people of color should be allowed to vote for candidates of their choice, even if the candidate is a non-minority. If eight majority minority districts can be created, there is no reason not to create them. On point two, the IRC held a round of public meetings on community of interest and then you all stuck the Copper Corridor in Eastern Pinal County and Southern Gila County with Winslow and St. John's on Interstate 40 in Northern Arizona, where there are no linkages to that, those areas, either culturally, geographically, or economically. Please leave Eastern Pinal and Southern Gila with the rest of Pinal County. And thank you for letting me make a couple of comments. 
Thank you. Our next speaker is Thomas Elliott, Jennifer Dawson, Kay Schreiner, and Margaret Bell. Thomas Elliott, can you hear us? Okay, awesome. Yeah, Mr. Elliott, can you hear us? Yes. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I first wish to acknowledge the Honorable Commission and thank the Commission as well as all of you for exercising your right to participate in redistricting by the people. It's a democratic process we should all be proud of. I'm from the Copper Corridor in LDA at Kearney. I'm going to turn down the volume on my phone there so there's no echo. Can you still hear me? Yes, I we can still hear you. Campaigns for candidates originating from LD8, particularly the centuries old multi-generational copper communities. I also originated and ran the Facebook page LD8 Democrats News Chat with between 1,000 and 2,000 members at present. My goal and experience for the past decade is of helping those who have the best policies and ability to help our district. I agree with the comments of the previous callers from Gold Canyon and former state Senator Peter Rios, former Pinal County Supervisor Rios. My experience informs me the new proposed LD7 map should not go forward as the new possible, impossible iteration for LD8 replacement. There is a 30% advantage for one party, the Republicans, over the vested centuries long communities of LD8, present LD8. And also, I don't think you should be counting prisoners as LD8 because they count them towards the Democratic votes usually and they don't vote. And they're not from here, most of them, many of them. So I, I do appreciate all the work you're doing, but we have nothing in common with Northern Arizona. It would be impossible for a state senator or a state representative without something to beam them around the county to get there to satisfy everybody. It was hard. Thank you. The next speaker will be Jennifer Dawson. Jennifer, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you so much for having this hearing. My name is Jennifer Dawson. I have lived in Tucson for 20 years, and I currently live in LD10, which is a fair and balanced political district for which I am grateful. I, like many others, am concerned about District 17, which is neither fair nor balanced and blatantly disregards redistricting goals as set out in the Arizona Constitution. Instead, it serves the goal of creating a safe Republican district in a predominantly Democratic county. It has been publicly stated that this was the intended goal. This is not a goal mentioned in the Arizona Constitution. As to the other violations of the required federal and state goals, as has been pointed out, it, District 17 is not compact and contiguous, made up of cherry-picked Republican-leaning suburbs from opposite ends of Tucson, separated by a mountain range and a 45-minute long drive. It does not respect communities of interest. It wants to put together Tanca Verde and Vail with Marana and Oro Valley. Why are these areas being put together? And in creating a safe Republican district, it is most definitely not competitive. Democratic Commissioner Lerner proposed the alternative version of District 17 that was contiguous and highly competitive, but it was rejected on the grounds that it failed to create a safe Republican district. Therefore, to meet federal and state requirements, the IRC needs to go back to LD test map version 9.0 as proposed by Commissioner Lerner. Thank you so much for your time and attention to this matter. Thank you. The next speaker will be Kay Schreiner, followed by Margaret Boak, followed by Ellen Shinkarel. Good Kay, morning. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. My name is Kay Schreiner and I live in Oro Valley. I shop, do business, access healthcare and other services and socialize in Oro Valley. I love this community and value its character. 
I'd like to comment on the proposed map of LD17 because I believe it raises questions about its compliances, compliance with the requirements for redistricting as set out in the constitution. As proposed, LD17 is not compact. It's an oddly shaped sprawling district spread over a large area and swinging around a mountain range. It looks gerrymandered. It looks like an animal, although I'm not sure which one. The boundaries appear to be arbitrary with little connecting the disparate parts. The far flung parts of the district, such as Vail, Tanga Verde and Marana look very different from the more densely populated areas. It disrupts natural communities of interest that already exist in Oral Valley, Casas Adobes and the Catalina foothills. All are suburban areas with relatively dense populations and lots of retail, healthcare and other services as well as cultural events. Most of the people I know are like me. They go to Casas Globois in the foothills often, but rarely to Vail or Tanga Verde or for that matter, Marana. Also, it's not possible to travel from the Northern section to the Eastern and Southern sections without passing through another district. From a practical standpoint, it places a burden on most forms of political participation. A related concern is the process that led to the adoption of the proposed maps. As reported in the media, the map was brought to the commission by an official of the Republican Party. In the interest of creating a safe Republican district, this is not the task of the commission. The commission is tasked with creating fair and competitive maps, not gerrymandering. Also, before accepting the Republican map, the commission had put aside maps submitted by the Latino Coalition and the Navajo Nation. The disparity in treatment is concerning. It Thank you. The next speaker is Margaret Folk, followed by Ellen Shintaro, and then we will take a 10-minute uh, break at 1.15. Margaret, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, my name is Margaret, um, and I've been a resident of Pima County since 1984. Our children were born, raised, and educated from preschool through college in this community. I have worked across Pima and Pinal counties as a pediatric speech and language pathologist. I've been welcomed into homes across Southern Arizona to work with families of delayed and disabled children. And I've learned that all of us in Southern Arizona have similar concerns about the people in our community, the people we care about and their futures. District 17 is outlined in the current proposed map is very troublesome. And I agree with my other um, uh, citizens in Southern Arizona that map 9.0 really better reflects our community. The voters approved Prop 106 on a bipartisan basis to protect the voting rights and representation of all of our citizens. It ensures competitive districts for the welfare of everyone, regardless of race and socioeconomic economic status, so that their voices are heard. If District 17 joins Tanka Verde, Oro Valley, Marana, and Vale, among other outlined areas, the voter mandate for respecting fair and competitive districts is just lost. These areas are also, as outlined by my other uh, Pima County residents, it's not geographically compact or contiguous. I'm disappointed that it does not meet the constitutional requirements of Proposition 106 and instead appears drafted just for political gain. That is not one of the things outlined by Prop 106. Thank you. The next speaker is Alan Shinkaro, and then we will take a 10 minute break. Um, hello, you can hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, my name is Ellen Shankaro. I'm a native Tucsonan and I've lived in the Sam Hughes neighborhood all of my 73 years. My three children all went to our neighborhood public schools, as did I. I also taught at the University of Arizona for over 40 years. The proposed legislative district map divides the Sam Hughes neighborhood in two. The redistricting committee has a mandate to not divide neighborhoods, to include people with shared interests. This division of my neighborhood seems very arbitrary 
and not in all in keeping with the mandate to keep communities of interest together. This simply divides what is a very cohesive neighborhood and that is not fair or right. Thank you. We will now take a 10 minute break. Our first speaker after the break will be Scott Olendorf followed by Ronald Brown.
Okay, our next speaker is going to be Scott Oldendorf, followed by Ronald Brown, followed by Christine Emery. Scott, can you hear us? I'm here, Ronald Brown. Mr. Brown, hang on just one moment. I think Scott Oldendorf is trying to unmute. Sure. <clears throat> Now, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you much, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Oldendorf. Uh, uh, I'm uh, a PC from Precinct 187 and a state committeeman uh, from LD9. I'm at 1451 West Sunridge Drive, and I'm a retiree uh, from Pima County Wastewater and Unincorporated Northwest Tucson. My community of interest uh, from my last testimony is still Northwest and North uh, Tucson up into Marana, Oro Valley, and Catalina, and uh, the Saddlebrook areas, but not, definitely, definitely not Tucson south of the Rialto River. Uh, when you look at your uh, CD um, uh, map, Congressional District map, CD2, uh, which we are, but will become uh, supposedly CD6, uh, it should include uh, Green Valley to the west and not Eloy and Casa Grande uh, to the northwest. Keep uh, CD6 compact in my community of interest, uh, including Green Valley and not Eloy and uh, Casa Grande. Uh, <clears throat> next on the legislative district, um, and I'm sorry, but going back, uh, the CD map was 7.1. On the legislative district, um, it's a uh, map 10.0. Uh, uh, we are LD9, but uh, proposed to be LD18. Uh, it should include Oral Valley to the northwest and Marana to the northwest, and definitely, definitely not the city of Tucson south of the Rialto River. And also, please do not, I emphasize, do not use the map 10.2. Uh, for this uh, map divides my northwest neighborhood west of La Cañada Road at Overton Road in half. Um, along Overton Road by dividing my community of uh, 250 homes immediately around me in half with the LD-17 to the north and LD-18 to the south. And it should be, all of it should be LD-18. Thank you. The next speaker is Ronald Brown. Mr. Brown, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Please proceed. Okay. My name is Ronald Brown. I'm semi-retired academic. I'm a resident of Oro Valley since 2002. My concern focuses on the proposed plan for placing Oro Valley in LD-17. This district is planned as a stretched out and narrow region running southeast below to the northwest outside of the Tucson city center, as previously described. This proposed district contains a large disparity in interest and concern, and as such overwhelms focused political activism as well as effective Arizona and federal ethics uh, resolution. I wish to impress on the planning committee benefits of placing Oro Valley into LD18. The proposed LD18 district and Oro Valley have a common border. The makeup of the communities in terms of interests and concerns with respects to living conditions, resources, occupational opportunities and interests are similar. The geographical nature of medical resources offers a centralized location of integrated care. Each provide personal and professional resources directly and indirectly to the U of A and surrounding technology development industries and services. As importantly, Oro Valley within LD18 mutually offer closely located residential areas to the university. In all, these attributes are benefits to the state's economy and environment. These aspects as outlined bring together a homogeneous community, yet with a political awareness. The proposed change supports each of the constitutional criteria with respect to Article 4, Part 2, Section A. Thank you very much for your consideration and attention. The next speaker will be Carol Schwa, excuse me, Allison Jones, and then uh, Leslie Kahn. Hi. Carol, can you hear us? Um, I can hear you. Uh, we can hear you. Please proceed. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carol Schloff. I'm a retired, I, I'm retired and a community organizer. I live in Tucson. Thank you, commissioners, 
for giving your time to this important process. My precinct is 21. It is the southernmost part of LD16. You refer to it as Tucson Estates. LD16 is very rural, gerrymandered, and non-competitive. It starts with a handful of Tucson precincts, goes north to Casa Grande, Gila Bend, Buckeye, uh, Goodyear, and extends east to Coolidge, San Manuel, and ends up at Oracle. To my neighbors and I, it seems that at least the Tucson part of this district um, are the leftovers from combining Marana, Oro Valley, and Saddlebrook into a district together. It meanders through three counties, Pima, Pinal, and Maricopa. We consider ourselves urban rather than rural. Tucson connects us. We are Tucson through and through. We feel that our LD16 representation will be geared toward a rural and a suburban Phoenix population, and we know we will be better served and represented by Pima County legislators. In LD16, our voices will be minimalized. Our most pressing concern with this is um, isolation. Uh, precinct 21, my precinct, along with sister precinct uh, 101, which is right next door, um, are the only two LD16 populated precincts for miles. To the north, to get to the closest town in our, in our district, which is Picture Rocks, we go through uninhabited Tucson Mountain Park and uninhabited Saguaro National Park. There are additional Tucson precincts in this. Thank you. Our next speaker is Allison Jones, followed by Leslie Cox, followed by Caleb Hader. Hi, this Allison is Jones. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hi, my name is Allison Jones. I live in Pima County and serve on the Tucson Water Citizens Advisory Committee and Pima County Regional Wastewater Recycling Advisory Committee. I'm a hydrologist who works on environmental and water issues. I spoke in a previous hearing about the importance of competitive districts. The IRC approved LD map features a District 17 that was literally conceived of and drawn by the Pima GOP to give the Republicans a safe district. And I gotta hand it to them, it wasn't easy. They had to include a mountain range and wrap it around the city like a boa constrictor. You can't drive from one end of it to the other without driving through other districts. District 17 as drawn is a partisan gerrymander and the GOP knew this when they drew it. Otherwise they would not have tried to pass it off as drawn by the Southern Area Arizona Leadership Council. No one has said this so far today, so I will say it. This is shameful. I urge the commission to use LD map 9.0 for Pima. Counties can be important communities of interest, as I said in a previous hearing, and this is true in Pima Pinal, where they relate to groundwater and the Pima and Pinal active management areas set forth in the Groundwater Management Act of 1980. The foothills area of D17 on map nine is also more compact and competitive than the BOA constrictor version. And the 9.0 version of district 17 could be won by any party who advances a capable candidate. I understand the challenges faced by this commission, but the LD maps must be better. The current maps do not meet goals of independent redistricting. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Leslie Cox. Leslie, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hello, my name is Leslie Cox and I've lived in Tucson for 33 years, but my community of interest for today's purpose is the entire state. I believe that we as a state benefit most greatly when our legislators arise from districts that are competitive. Therefore, I would ask for the chair, Dr. Newberg, to reconsider the boundaries of LD17 and choose LD17 draft version 9.0, which outlines the competitive district over the currently accepted draft version, which is not competitive. With draft map version 10, there is an overall legislative partisan lean. By moving district 17 towards being a highly competitive 
this would reduce this imbalance. In the end, it matters that the views of our legislators are more strongly linked to the overall opinion of the district than to the voters from their party in that district. I hope with these changes, we can move forward toward more bipartisanship in the State House in the next 10 years. Thank you for your time and your consideration. The next speaker is Caleb Hader. Caleb, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you so much. Uh, I live in Northeast Tucson and I'm speaking and with regards to two districts. First, Congressional District 6. Um, I think that Congressional District 6, as currently uh, drawn, is not compact and con as contiguous as possible, and it does not include communities of interest. Uh, folks in Graham and Greenlee counties don't have a whole lot in common with folks in Metropolitan Tucson, and uh, Metropolitan Tucson doesn't have a whole lot in common with Northern and rural Pima County. I think um, a more compact, contiguous district for District 6, such as the one in Congressional District Test Map version 1.1, would be uh, much better. And secondly, um, I'm speaking about Legislative District 17. Um, this district is not compact and contiguous, it's not competitive, and it does not respect communities of interest. Um, folks in southern, southeast uh, Tucson and Vail have very little to do with uh, Marana and Oro Valley. To get from one end of the district to the other, it is required to leave the district completely. And also, this district, um, as currently drawn, is a Republican advantage of at least seven percentage points. I believe that we should go back to the district uh, map 9.0 as proposed by Commissioner Lerner, which satisfies all these concerns much better than the District 17 in the current proposed version. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Diane Coscarelli. Diane, can you unmute yourself? Thank you, Diane. Oh, Diane, I don't see that you have a microphone. Diane, we're going to move to the next speakers and then we'll help you uh, try to figure out what's going on with your microphone. The next speaker is Brenda Wexler. Brenda, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Please proceed. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. I'm Brenda Wexler and I live in Legislative District 10. But when I look at District 17 on map 10.0, I see many voices that will never be heard, not for the next 10 years. To crystallize this thought, I personally call this de facto voter suppression. So today I'm asking you to make District 17 competitive, to make as many districts as competitive as possible. Once done, this will not only ensure the absolute best candidates to represent us, but you, the commission, will ensure this 2021 Arizona Independent Commission to forever be known as making Arizona a more perfect state, a state representative of all of Arizona. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be Francine Sacchio, followed by Melissa Westbrook, followed by Catherine Nichols, and then Robert Federoff. Francine, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Please proceed. Yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, this afternoon. Uh, I, my name is Francine Sacchio. I'm a resident of Oral Valley. Arizona. Uh, I live at Oral Valley Sun City. Don't say her name, just say it. However, <laughs> I lived in Tucson since 1999 in the Northwest section. I agree with Nelson Morgan, Mitzi Cowell, Mike, Lisa, Carol Mellon, Jennifer Dawson, Kate K. Schreiner, Margaret Vogue, Ellen Shanko. Allison Jones, Leslie Cox, Caleb, and Brenda Wexler. 
uh, regarding uh, 9.2 version of um, the the map that has been proposed at this point, I I do believe that 9.0 must survive. I I do hope you will reconsider the co competitive districts inspire voter confidence. What is going on? Okay. Competitive districts inspire voter confidence and participation. They encourage all parties to advance their best candidates who must run on their merits, not on par party affiliation. Something that hasn't been talk talked about much, but we are a state of three parties. The independents would truly have a voice and a choice if the competitive if the districts were competitive ideally this would mean 10 districts for each group of voters and five competitive districts as proposed by 9.2 is far too few please follow the con the state constitution and thank you the next speaker is melissa westbrook melissa can you hear us i can good afternoon my name is Melissa Westbrook and I live in the far northwest of Tucson. The creation of LD17 is partisan and clearly favors one party. The gerrymandered map affects every Pima County legislative district adversely. Multiple maps drawn by citizens submitted properly, meeting checks and balances demonstrate that accepting and adopting this map is unnecessary and, we, and detrimental. This map promotes the goal of creating a safe Republican district in a predominantly Democratic county. District 17 is not compact and contiguous. It is made up of selected Republican leaning suburbs from opposite ends of the Tucson area that are separated by a mountain range. I mean, just log logistically, you need to change LD 17 if only for the sake of the person who gets elected to represent it, given the distance factor that he or she would have to cover. The IRC should go back to the LD test map version 9.0 as proposed. As well, the Coconino Board of Supervisors map emphasizes giving the Navajo Nation the numbers they need to elect representatives of their choice and keeping all the Northern Arizona tribes together. I want to read you a quote from Pamela Carlin, who is a law professor at Stanford. It used to be the idea was once every two years, voters elected their representatives. And now instead, it's every 10 years, the representatives choose their constituents. I would add that co compromise and consensus must be the order of the day, and that includes co creating competitive districts. Put our great state of Arizona first, not any party. Remember, history will judge you. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. The next speaker is Catherine Nichols. Catherine, can you hear us? Catherine, can you unmute yourself? The next speaker is Robert Robert Federoff. Robert. Robert, can you unmute yourself? Okay, am I unmuted? Yes, please proceed. Yes, my name is Robert Fenneroff. I moved to Tucson in 1960. I live in state legislative district number three and I am a retired social studies teacher in the Sunnyside School District. If I were in the classroom, I would be assigning my students the task of assessing the independence and impartiality of the chairperson of the IRC to see she was in fact being fair and impartial and following the six guidelines of Prop 106 that affect Southern Arizona. At this point in the commission's deliberations, the chairperson would be assigned a failing grade. She has allowed, fair, she has allowed four of the six goals of the constitution to be violated. All goals of course are as if possible. Violation number one, the district shall be geographically compact and contiguous, she failed. 
violation two, district boundaries shall respect communities of interest. Fails again. Violation three, district links shall use visible geographic features, city, town, and country boundaries, and undivided census tracts. Fails. And finally, violation number four of the six goals, competitive districts should be favored. I believe my students would find the chairperson derelict in her duties to be an independent and impartial chair of the committee. Thank you. <laughs> the next speaker is Andrew Flack. I'm sorry, I, Catherine, I'm sorry, Catherine Nichols looks like she's unmuted. Catherine, can you hear us? I can. Okay, Catherine, please proceed. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Catherine Nichols, and I was born and bred in Tucson, Arizona. I am the daughter of a legislator who served for 10 years, and I am currently in that area that has been discussed about 1718. I would just like to say that as a family member who ran in a competitive district, it forced us to be um, better campaigners. It forced us to speak to all voters. And that is part of the reason that 106 had that as one of its key components. Competitive districts make for better legislators. And so I just wanted to put my voice in for MAP 9.0 and in general for competitive districts as one of the key issues after federal laws are accomplished. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Andy Flack. Andy, can you hear us? Andy? After that, our next speaker is Catalina Hall. Catalina, can you hear us? Our next speaker is Joseph Bugar. Joseph, can you hear us? Catalina Hall, please proceed. Catalina? Okay, we'll go to Joe Bugar. Joe, can you I can hear you? I can hear you. Thank you. Please. I can hear. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to say today, my name is Joe Bogart. I'm Miranda, Pima County. What I'm going to say today, uh, this, uh, this afternoon now, is based on two facts. Traditionally, the largest minority groups vote Democrat. And the second is, in 2015, 28% of all congressional districts were majority minority in the United States. That's a genius. That's a really ingenuity. The Voters Act requires and prohibits gerrymandering to maintain a voter voting majority. This means that the Democrats start off with a 28% advantage. And now they can spend their time. They can spend their uh, time redistricting and and campaigning to water down conservative majorities. The punchline is Pima County is one of these counties. We were three districts and now two. Draft seven point one shows those along the central I-19 corridor who have everything in common with communities of interest north of the Rita and down Houghton Corridor have been neutered, I assume in the interest of competitive districts. The federal government has guaranteed Pima County one district will be Democratic. And now looking at the map, it appears that the IRC in spite of the strong similarities of communities, wants to maximize the opportunity for the left to capture both. 
I have attended three sessions. With very few exceptions, the argument of the left has been based on competitiveness. It is not competitive. Thank you. We're going to try Andy Flock again. Andy, can you hear us? Okay, Andy, I think you need to log back in. What about Catalina Hall? Catalina, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, I'm Catalina. Catalina Hall, please. And I identify identify as an Asian American Pacific Islander. And I'm telling you that because I want Chairperson Newberg to be independent and guided by the goal to fulfill the U.S. Constitution and the Voting Rights Act. I want to thank Commissioner Lerner for defending fair and competitive districts. On October 27th, uh, in our local paper, one commissioner was quoted that maps should ensure more Republicans in Pima County. Now that is a partisan idea and not a fair goal. If you want to see fair maps, uh, I know that Brian Dickel and Barathon Kalia Raman have submitted better maps. And I would like Commissioners Watchman and York to please consider these fair maps. Proposed LD16 splits parts of three counties, which is a violation of the community of interest. At least put the small part of Pima that is there in your LD16, uh, make it a part of Pima County in LD20. Thank you for your time. Thank you. We're going to try and unmute Kay Federoff. Kay, can you unmute? Kay, on your okay, we'll let you work that out and then we'll go to Deborah McEwen, followed by Katie. Ma Hello. Deborah, please proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, thank you to the chairman and the committee for working so hard on this very, very difficult and important uh, endeavor. I am Deborah McEwen from Rio Rico uh, down in Santa Cruz County, and I would like to speak about legislative district uh, proposal uh, 10 for uh, district 21. Santa Cruz County is one of the smallest counties in the state of Arizona next to, I believe it's uh, Greenlee County. And population wise, we've got about 46,000 people in that county. We have always been placed with another county and uh, also in an area of much larger population. So that means that our legislative district has always had representation and activities and uh, an executive board full of people from an area that is outside of our small rural county. In this particular area, we have agriculture, we have small business economy, we have uh, particular rural education issues and environmental issues that do not uh, meld very well with the urban areas of Tucson. And we keep getting put in to the South Tucson area with a large group of population. If you look at the current version 10 map, we are literally cut in half by our county. Uh, we have cut out part of our towns that we uh, shop in and socialize in and spend our money in. We are separated by uh, a lot of the, the Pima County area. If we were to have a legislative district like map 10, that means that we would be venturing all the way up probably into South Tucson to have our legislative meetings. They are not representative of how we live in our rural areas. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to next have Katie Ma and then Andy Flock. Katie? Um, hello, hello, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm Katie Moss, and I have lived on Tucson's Far East Side since 1985, and I work at the University of Arizona. I don't believe LD17 in the current draft map lives up to the redistricting goals established by the Arizona Constitution. As so many have stated, 
It is not geographically compact and contiguous. It doesn't respect communities of interest and it's not competitive. Instead, proposed LD17 looks to be the definition of gerrymandering. Not only is it not contiguous, it aligns segments of the greater Tucson area that have little in common other than an abundant percentage of Republican voters to make it a safe Republican district. I'm tired of so-called safe districts that don't represent the majority of centrist Arizonans. I'm tired of having a state legislature that passes extremist legislation that often leads to, un to constitutional lawsuits and citizens' ballot initiatives. Arizonans deserve as many competitive districts as possible. The pro proposed LD17 affects my neighborhood directly. I live in the city of Tucson and regularly meet a cross-section of independents, Democrats, and Republicans at my city park. If the pandemic has done one thing for us, it has led more people to stop and talk and even broach the sensitive topic of politics. I was encouraged to learn how central so many people are. Regardless of party, my neighbors were abhorred by state legislation attacking public education and voting rights. After extremist legislation um, was dropped to the state budget bill, these neighbors stopped by my house this past spring to sign petitions for valid initiatives to safeguard school funding and overturn voting restrictions. I asked this commission to abandon LD17 as, as currently proposed in the draft plan. Instead, please give serious consideration to the very competitive map proposed by Commissioner Lerner, LD test map 9.0. 9 Thank you. The next speaker is Andy Flott. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay. Hi, my name is Andy Flock, and I want to start out by acknowledging the IRC staff who've uh, done an amazing job running this meeting. It's <laughs> I've helped run some meetings, and I know it's not easy, um, especially the person who's been whipping the map around as people talk about different districts. Um, I live in Tanca Verde, which is in uh, the much discussed <laughs> District 17. I live here with my wife and two kids. Uh, I've lived here for over 20 years. My daughter goes to school at UHS in Tucson. My son is homeschooled and we participate in lots of groups and events in Tucson. Uh, I don't like the way that District 17 cuts me off from every part of Tucson I go to. Uh, our family has gone to Oro Valley maybe three or four times in the past 20 years. We go on vacation there at Catalina State Park in our RV. Uh, now, District 17 is uh, theoretically geographically contiguous, but as a practical matter, the way people live and, and travel in their day-to-day -day lives, it's two separate districts, District 17 West and District 17 East. And as people mentioned, they're about 40 minutes apart. Uh, as many people have mentioned, uh, District 17 was expressly drawn for the purpose of creating a safe Republican district in a Democratic area. Um, if the Constitution said the commissioners shall strive to create safe districts uh, for the non-majority party uh, and count in urban areas, then I would say that the commission is doing a great job. But the constitution doesn't say that. This goal of a safe district for the minority party uh, is not in the constitution, was not approved by the voters, and it's not even being enforced consistently. Where's the safe democratic District for. Thank you. The next speaker is Diane Cascarelli. Diane, can you hear us? <clears throat> yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Please proceed. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I am Diane Cascarelli, and I want to thank the commission for all their hard work and for listening to me today. Uh, I will be addressing LD17. I have lived in the Catalina foothills of the Tucson area for the last seven years. After retiring, my husband and I moved here from Ohio. And one of our first positive impressions of my new community was the vibrant competitive nature of elections. In just the, the few years that I have been here, the party of my congressperson 
has changed not once, but twice. Now that wasn't the case in Ohio, probably because our Ohio districts were so gerrymandered, there was no point in, com in anyone competing for our votes. But now I am very concerned. I am concerned about losing what we have these next 10 years. And that is because proposed LD17 would take that away. LD17 disregards many of the goals of the Arizona Constitution. It is not at all compact or contiguous. Its communities of interest are far flung and desperate, and it lacks competitiveness. It sweeps around the outskirts of Tucson, creating um, an unusual figure to fashion an obviously safe Republican district. I really fear that this version of LD17 will not only chill voter participation, but it will also encourage ex extremism. And so what can we do about this? I think there is a viable alternative. I urge the commission, please go back to test map LD 9.0 that Commissioner Lerner proposed. That test map corrects the constitutional shortcomings found in the current LD 17 and it ensures that all of us. Thank you. And the next speaker is Thomas McConey, followed by Vivek Barathan, and then followed by Louise Good. Thomas, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom McConey, and I'm a resident of rural Valley, Oro Valley. And like everybody else, I would like to thank the commission for doing all the hard work that's gotten to this point. Unfortunately, at the last minute, um, something has happened, which leads me to remind the commission that it has an obligation to exercise its power in an independent and ethical fashion. At the very last minute, a map created by a so-called business organization with direct ties to a Republican commissioner was sent directly to chairperson by Republican operatives. Commissioner Mel, instead of immediately recusing himself from the obvious conflict of interest, demanded that his map be approved. Instead of avoiding the appearance of impropriety, he embraced it. His map takes a suburb of Tucson with indisputable ties with his southern neighbors and places it in a district with rural communities over 70 miles away and a mountain range in between. Just looking at the picture of this district, would bring you back to the old dictionary definition of gerrymandering. Had Democrats or any other group steamrolled the last minute map created and submitted by a Democratic commissioner, Republican heads would be exploding. It is not too late to do this independently and ethically. Constitutional criteria can be fairly applied in Oro Valley and statewide, but only if you choose to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Vivek Burhatan. Vivek, are you here? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. All right. Hi, uh, my name is Vivek. I grew up in Tucson and graduated from high school in a census year, which was 2000. Um, my friends and I had just learned the impacts the census can have on our communities and our democracy and our government class. So we enthusiastically signed up and interviewed to work for the census. If you're speaking, can you please mute? We had also learned how partisan the redistricting process can be, and it's discouraging that 20 years later, we're pretty much in the same boat, and that's all how it always has been. Um, I wanna echo many of the previous speakers to say that the proposed map for LD17 is clearly gerrymandered and needs to go. I joined those previous speakers in urging the commission to adopt map 9.0. I also echo speakers like Melissa Westbrook to urge the commission to ensure indigenous people are represented in our state's legislative map. Let's show this year's graduates from our schools how this democratic process is supposed to work. Let's have com competitive districts and let's ensure that our elected officials are engaged and accountable to us. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for listening. Thank you. The next three speakers are Luis Good, Linda Horitz and Frank Bergen. Louise, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, my name is Louise Good. I strongly believe in competitive districts in which neither party has an overwhelming advantage. This not only keeps representatives on their toes, 
It also increases voter interest and discourages extremism. I have lived in Pima County just outside the town of Oro Valley for over seven years. I grocery shop in Oro Valley and Casas Adobes, exercise at the Northwest Y, and pray at a synagogue near the Tucson Jewish Community Center. <laughs> I rarely go more than a couple of miles north of Tangerine Road. I live in what is currently CD2 and LD9. Under the currently accepted redistricting max, maps version 9.2, I would be in LD18, just barely. Some of my neighbors who are not much different from me would be in LD17 because they live on the other side of Northern Avenue. A spur of LD17 cuts off my area from the rest of LD18. Why? Please keep Oro Valley together with Casas Adobes. Oro Valley has much more in common with Northern Pima County demographically and economically than it does with Saddlebrook Vale or Reddington. Also, the current version of LD17 does not take into consideration significant landmarks such as Oracle Road, our transportation corridor, and the Catalina Mountains. It's a gerrymandered district. Please reinstate version 9.0. Thank you so much for taking on this difficult task and giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you. The next speaker is Linda Horowitz. Linda, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Linda Horowitz. My husband and I moved to Catalina Foothills over 25 years ago. We moved because he had a job with a large company here in Tucson that develops missiles for our country's defense. Soon after I moved here, Proposition 106 was passed and I was proud to live in a state that believed in independent redistricting. That's why I'm speaking today. Unfortunately, the maps that are currently being proposed for Southern Arizona do not appear to fit the description that I was so proud to brag to my friends was part of the Arizona law. I'm currently proposed to be in CD6, which creates a finger to grab us away from Tucson and into the rural districts that have nothing to do with our area. These lines are not compact and not respectful to our community of interest and ignore the fact that we are Tucson and we're not sitting out in those rural areas. I'm also placed in LD18, but this district and District 17 are snaking around to grab different constituencies without regard to communities of interest or geographic location. They unfortunately have the appearance of being gerrymandered for one political party over another. I'm so disappointed. My current CD and LD are so competitive for both Democrats and Republicans and represented us at various times over the last 10 years with both Democrats and Republicans. I hope that this commission will review these maps change the lines so that there's compact and competitiveness back into our district, such as 9.0. Please make Arizona proud. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Frank Bergen. Frank, are you here? Uh, I'm here. Uh, and I, I can be heard and I'm sure you can hear me. Um, my name is Frank Bergen. My wife and I moved uh, into the Tanka Verde Valley from Southern California. Uh, 26 years ago. Uh, we've lived here in the same house, same place ever since. Uh, we are in a uh, the, the, the valley, which is quite Republican in its leanings. But as I have learned uh, in, in working in the, uh, the political life of the community, uh, that people here are ready to support a legislator who will support their schools uh, they, they, regardless of party. Uh, so it's not exactly as, as though we were in a, a, a terrible place for a Democrat. Now, speaking at least for um, Precinct 199 uh, as an official of the precinct, the precinct committeeman, uh, the, I can say that the Tank Verde folks look not north to Marana, but west due west to Tucson. Uh, we shop in Tucson. Uh, my wife and I have bought every car that we've owned since we came here in Tucson. Uh, we have visited the Tucson hospitals, uh, the Tucson medical care. 
uh, Tucson Recreation, whether it be at the Symphony or at the uh, Hillenbrand Stadium or McHale. Uh, everything that we do is directed in the Tucson direction rather than, than uh, way north past the mountains. I love the mountains, but I can't climb the mountains to get from here in a straight line to Marana. Uh, as far as competitiveness is concerned, uh, we, uh, that, which I have spoken to at every meeting that I've attended in the last two commissions, competitiveness should be. Thank you. The next speaker is Julia Conway. Julia, can you hear us? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. My name is Julia Kendrick Conway, and I reside in the community of Sabino Springs on the northeast side of Tucson in the foothills. Uh, my grandparents lived here in Tucson. My father grew up in Tucson, graduated from the University of Arizona, attended Tucson High School. And uh, looking at the map uh, 9.2 for LD17, it's obviously uh, manipulated to support a certain position. Competitive districts does not mean splitting the state up into X amount of districts that are one color and X amount of districts that are another. Competitive means there's an opportunity for a candidate to run on issues within their district that are meaningful to their districts. As far as the way these district boundaries are drawn in 9.2, uh, they are not geographically compact or contiguous as others have noted. It does not respect the boundaries of communities of interest and it is not competitive, it is partisan. And the people that drafted this map were not even hiding the fact that this was a partisan district. So I urge you commissioners to please reconsider uh, Commissioner Learn's proposal map 9.0 presents a much more reasonable district for legislative district 17 and allows us to remain competitive and represent all Tucsonans at the ballot box. Thank you very much for your time and for working on this very difficult task. Thank you, Corliss. The next speaker is Corliss Jenkins Sherry. Corliss, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, great. Um, my name is Corliss Jenkins Sherry, and I live in Oro Valley, and I'm retired. I've lived here about seven, seven years. I would like to thank the redistricting commissioners for their work on this very important task. I do not support the uh, configuration of the current configuration of LB17 that is in the adopted legislative draft map. The Oral Valley area has different concerns than Reddington Pass and Dale. Oral Valley is much more aligned with Adobe and North Tucson with Oracle and La Cunada as direct business corridors in Tucson. The west side of the Catalina are a natural boundary that should be respected. Uh, Northern Pima County, the town of Oral Valley, and the Amphitheater Unified School District boundaries should be respected also. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is James Barra. James, can you hear us? Thank you. Uh, my name is James Barra. I'm a retired physician who's lived, worked, and volunteered in North and Northeast Tucson for over 31 years. After studying the current draft map, I and several of my neighbors who could not speak today have serious concerns about it. I think having competitive districts is very important. Ours is a competitive, ethnically diverse state. One third of Arizona voters are independent. The latest draft map contains several districts that are not competitive and clearly do not follow the intent of Prop 106 in the Arizona Constitution. One glaring example of this is the proposed LD17, as so many speakers have pointed out already. I'm still in the meeting and I'm almost up. Um, okay. Excuse me, could you please mute? Okay, did you please? One glaring example of this is the proposed LD17, as so many speakers have already pointed out. The Arizona Constitution requires a district be geographically compact and reasonably contiguous. It requires that competitive districts are to be favored and they shall respect communities of interest. Thank you. The next speaker is Barbara Tellman. Barbara, can you hear us?
Barbara, can you hear us? The next speaker after Barbara is Kelly Ranman Barathan. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. My name is Kalyan Raman Bharatan, <clears throat> and I've been a resident of Tucson for 33 years. First, my thanks to the Commission for the time you have dedicated to an important cause for our state and for democracy in general. A digress, please. In a certain county in southern Arizona, the two competing cable TV companies were permitted to create their own zones. <laughs> People in the north part of the county get access to one cable company's services. People in the southern part get access to the other company's services. It's like two football teams playing on two different fields. There is no game to talk about. The idea that competitors should have a fair chance of winning is lost. And there is an incentive to ignore the customer, which I think many people around Pima County will recognize. There's a problem with these maps that is similar. There are two new districts in Tucson, LD20 and LD21, that are heavily demographic, and they need not be. I know it's very difficult to actually redraw the maps to make them less of a packed democratic district, but it's something that could be considered. Similarly, the new district 17 is very public and not cooperative either, as many people have pointed out. For LD17, it would be great if the commission would go back to LD test map 9.0 where LD17 is definitely more competitive, but that is not enough. I wish the Commission had spent more time considering how to make the entire region more competitive in the real sense of the term. It's not too late, though, to do that. I request that you leave us a legacy of fair competition from the hard work that you're doing with such dedication. Thank you again. Thank you. The next speaker is Anne Elizabeth Doan followed by Eric Robbins and Susan Anderson. Anne Elizabeth? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, okay. Uh, my great-grandfather was the first territorial judge who presided over the courthouses from Nogales to the New Mexico border before Arizona became a state. And I disagree with the Arizona Legislative District 21 map as outlined. I-19 must all be part of the legislative district 21 and not be added to district 19, Cochise County, which sounds like district 17, very heav heavily Republican, a Democrat could not ever win in Cochise County. The area north of Rio Rico and south of Tucson have been moved to district 19, which covers most of Cochise County. The state, national, and international goals in the southeast of the state are quite different from those of I-19 corridor. The commission has arbitrarily jumped over the railroad tracks in the Santa Cruz River to pull this area into Cochise County. It makes no sense. The input given by people today on the outline uh, on the other maps uh, represent, again, heavily uh, Republican areas that our I-19 has been pulled into. Interstate 19 runs from Nogales to South Tucson. The community of interest brings in billions of dollars in revenue to the state of Arizona through tourism, trade, and the produce industry. The community of interest needs decisions made by the same legislature, the same senators and representatives, not from two different areas. Another criteria not being uh, met is the incorporation of visible geographic areas. I-19 is one of the major highways in Arizona. The criteria of compactness and contiguousness uh, is totally dismissed because you pull the middle of I-19 into Cochise County. Two other key criteria of equal population is non-existent by pulling. Thank you. The next speaker is Eric Robbins. Eric? Thank you, organizer, and thank you for your patience and steadiness throughout this process. Everybody, my name is Eric Robbins. When I wrote this, I started it with good morning, but we're all here for a long day. I appreciate your being here. I have lived in Arizona since 1981. I'm a graduate of the University of Arizona. Um, as other people have mentioned, I also am a very big fan of Proposition 106, and when it passed, I was proud that Arizona had done so. But a few turns of the wheel down the road, 
I've got some concerns about that. Uh, it's been said by people who are probably smarter than me that if you don't have any stomach for cheating, you're probably not going to like politics very much. But uh, that's a hard truth that more citizens probably have to swallow uh, than should. But 20 years after Arizonans amended our constitution enshrining fair legislative mapping, we are hearing about backdoor submissions of legislative maps, essentially under a fake hat and mustache, maps drawn that have a blatant partisan intent, submitted in bad faith, frankly, containing textbook examples of the gerrymandering Arizonans so clearly rejected two decades ago. There are more issues than I have time to touch on, but districts 17 and 19 in particular will serve as a Rorschach test for Arizona democracy. What I will henceforth be referring to as the mustache submissions of draft 10 ignores at least half and arguably two thirds of the six mandates this commission stands to protect. Communities are being divided, shared infrastructure is split across lines drawn for what's obviously partisan intent. Frankly, it's a breathtaking bit of, I wonder if anyone will notice politics. Well, insofar as this process is bound to transparency, clearly we notice, I ask that you reconsider and redraw these maps fairly. I think the uh, proposed maps in nine are excellent and I'll conclude here. Thanks for your time. Thank you. The next three speakers are Susan Anderson, Carissa Sip, and then Barbara Tillman. Susan, can you hear us? Yes, I can. You can hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hello, I'm Susan Anderson. I have lived in Pima County Precinct 40 for over 30 years. My children attended school in Morana Unified School District. My precinct is in an unincorporated area of Pima County between Morana and Oro Valley. I can understand the logic of IRC members wanting to place Morana and Oro Valley in the same legislative district. However, I cannot see any reason for that legislative district to spread clear to Tanco Verde and then over to Vail. There is no good way to get from Morana to Vail. In the past 10 years, I have visited Vail exactly zero times. For the past 10 years, I have been part of LD11. That's been problematic. LD11 spans more than 100 miles, half in Pima County, half in Pinal County. It is tilted heavily towards one political party. Consequently, we have been represented by some of the most extreme politicians in the entire state, Mark Fincham and Vince Leach. They have listened only to their base because there has been no need for them to listen to other residents in their legislative district. I was looking forward to the redistricting process so we could start fresh in the northwest part of Pima County. My own precinct is very evenly balanced between Republicans, Democrats, and independents. The surrounding area is similarly balanced. We'd like to have politicians from both parties making good faith pitches to win our votes. But it has been publicly stated that the new LD17 is drawn in a way that is meant to be a safe Republican district. It is worrisome to me that we could end up having a repeat of the same LD11 problem with extreme politicians. But this can be fixed if the IRC has the will to fix it. First, eliminate Vail and Tank of Ready from the new LD17. Second, respect legitimate communities of interest in the Morana Oro Valley area. That could be accomplished by including the entire Morana Unified School District in the new ULD. The community of Picture Rocks is in Morana Unified and also within Pima County. Thank you. The next speaker is Carissa Sip. Carissa, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, so we made it. I'm 175. We're almost done. I, I, I really appreciate everybody for keeping the cameras on listening to us. So I'll keep it brief. And I've changed my speech a little bit, but I want to really stress that I'm here to talk about the real goal of the Arizona IRC. I know it's the, I want to stress the competitive nature of the legislative and congressional districts. And that's the, the focus. And I think the goal that I actually, as a voter in 2000, 2000 uh, elected when I was living in Phoenix at that time. Um, I live in LD, or by the current map proposal, I live in LD18, I work in LD21, and my daughter attends school in LD20. <laughs> so that just shows you how cut up Tucson is to appreciate the, uh, I guess, uh, LD17 creation. I have elderly relatives that are in LD17 that are perplexed at the new mapping, and they've lived in Arizona for over 50 years. It's like a chimera-shaped district. That's the best way I know how to put it. So in looking over the release map and the bad haircut Tucson got, I kind of just wanted to know what was, what was the uh, protocols or how did we rate 
So there was a Princeton gerrymandering report card I reviewed because it was noted on the, the landing page from the IRC. I would expect A's across the board because this commission is dedicated to nonpartisan, really getting down to what Arizona wanted. Well, that's not what I saw. I receive, we receive only an A in a nonpartisan advantage, but the devil is in the details. The competitiveness of the districts almost came out with an F. That means the map could and should be much better. And I go back to the LD test map 9.0 as being a better map that we should probably refer to. And a lot of people are making that comment as well. In addition to the low grade, low grade in the maps, we're not compact. We're not doing the right thing of thinking about county crossings that we have. We've crossed over counties over and over again, and our shapes are not even close to what they call the REOC scores that keep optimizing, keep or are optimizing for the representation according to that. Thank you. The next speaker is Barbara Tillman. Barbara, can you hear us? Barbara, can you hear us? The next speaker is, is it? The next speaker is Larry Bodine. Larry, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me too? Yes, please proceed. All right. My name is Larry Bodine. I live in Tucson. And I want to focus on the new Legislative District 17 map, which was created to perpetuate the Republican majority in the legislature for the next 10 years. This sprawling district, which is split in half by a mountain, connects Red Rock in the north to Vail 71 miles away. This is not a community of interest. This is not a corridor of communities. This is the work of a Republican spy. Anna Clark, who is the second vice president of the Pima County Republican Party. She sent the LD-17 map through an intermediary to Commissioner David Mayo, and now it's online. The new District 17 violates the Arizona Constitution in three different ways. Number one, District 17 is not compact and contiguous. It is made up of cherry-picked Republican suburbs from opposite ends of the Tucson area that are separated by a mountain range, a 71-mile drive. Number two, District 17 does not respect communities of interest. The residents of Tankaverde and Vale have very little to do with the distant suburbs of Marana and Oro Valley and actually have much closer ties to Midtown Tucson. Please Designing District mm -hmm. 17 to create a safe Republican district violates the constitutional requirement that competitive districts should be favored. LD 17 is the very illustration of gerrymandering. Commissioner Lerner proposed an alternative version of District 17 that was highly competitive, but it was rejected because it failed to create a safe Republican district. For these reasons, the IRC should go back to LD test map version 9.0 as proposed by Commissioner Lerner. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Elizabeth Packard. Elizabeth, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Yes, my name is Elizabeth Packard and I'm a 50 year resident of Arizona and Pima County has been my home for the last 45 years. I have written more of a biography, but in the interest of time and the Stephen McEwen. Beg pardon? Ah. In the interest of time, um, I rewritten my script six times and want to um, simply acknowledge the tenacity of the commission and the 242 speakers who have either already spoken or will be speaking. Um, I will recognize the fact that at least 50 speakers have already pointed out LD-17 is neither compact, contiguous, nor contiguous, and so therefore it cannot reflect communities of interest. My request um, is to scrap map 10, as has been asked before, and replace it with 9.0. And because this has been requested by so many people, I don't think I need to be redundant by going through all of the um, exact reasons why this should be done. So thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Stephen McEwen. Stephen? 
Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hi, my name is Steve McHugh and I am the uh, Santa Cruz County Chairman for the Republican Party. I'm confused as to why the city of Tucson is constantly imposed upon our rural, rural society in Southern Arizona. It's nearly large enough to be a CD on its own and yet it is split and shared among plans for CD and LD alike. The city of Tucson has a cultural principles driven by special interest groups that are not shared or respected in the rural community. I would challenge the board to work harder at giving our rural communities of interest the opportunity to represent our own values and principles. The construction of our legislative district for Santa Cruz County is very important in my view. Due to the size of Santa Cruz County, second smallest in the state, we will always be joined with the neighbors of a creation of a legislative districts. I think the citizens of Santa Cruz have a unique community traits due to its location on the border and the nearly 90% population of Hispanics. Santa Cruz County has been identified by census to be the most concentrated population of Hispanics in Arizona. The Hispanic society is neighbors with the population of retired Anglo-Saxons in the eastern half of our county that is primarily agricultural and mining. This little county is very diverse in many ways. In spite of our diversity, the one thing we have all in common is that we are a rural society. I do include Nogales in this label because a city of approximately 20,000 does not represent the same values and principles as a city the size of Tucson. I've lived in county cities the size of Nogales most of my life and finally I have a personality of my own. A proposal for LD20 is successful in my opinion. Our proposed LD is grossly familiar with the gerrymandering of 10 years ago. This proposal does not fill the requirement of compactness, border boundaries, or keeping communities intact. In addition, it cuts out the very area that Santa Cruz citizens migrate to shop and entertain ourselves outside of Nogales, just north of our county border. Popular consent would suggest that most citizens in our county avoid Tucson as much as possible. The most serious problem I have with this proposal is the city of Santa Cruz will be subject to mob rule by the city of Tucson. Thank you. The next speaker is Maria Hidalgo. Maria? Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you so much. Well, folks, it's four and a half hours later. Uh, like a couple of the other speakers, I've changed my remarks several times. And I want to make sure the commissioners are, are hearing. And thank you, Commissioner Newberg, for staying on camera. I appreciate your time as well as you, Commissioner uh, Lerner. You're hearing the voices of Tucson and Pima County. It is clear, we're not happy with LD, uh, the proposed map for LD-17. Even to the untrained eye, this proposed LD-17 map appears to have just selected Republican leaning suburbs that are in opposite ends of the Tucson area. You know, I found it so disheartening to think that a special interest group of the Southern Arizona Leadership Council submit a map via a, a political party and pretty much go to the head of the line um, this is not what the IRC was set up for. The IRC was set up so that citizens can hear the voices. Please listen to these voices. The real map that I think you need to go back to that really shows competitiveness is version 9.0. I thank you for your time. Listen to these voices. The reason why we have hung on this long because we need it to be heard. Thank you. The next speaker is Marlene Bluestein. Marlene, can you unmute yourself? After Marlene, we will go to Jean McConey. Jean, please proceed. Hi, my name is Jean and I'm a retiree from Oral Valley. I'm appreciative of this time, so thank you so much. Uh, I know you're tired, <laughs> I am too. Uh, I want to express my opposition to the adopted legislative draft map, uh, again, especially LD-17. LD-17 is a sprawling district with significant geographical barriers at its center. There's no shared transportation corridor, no shared community interest, no shared commonalities. LD-17 is a hodgepodge uh, with vastly dis disparate economies, demographics, and needs. Oral Valley shares a water supply with Casa Dobies and Pima County, while the uh, far -flung, flung places in Pinal and over the um, mountains in the south, they rely on groundwater. Oral Valley shares developmental uh, development concerns with northern Pima County places. Recently, the citizens of Oral Valley 
helped turn a former golf course into a nature preserve. The other places in LD17 that are rural aren't concerned about development and urban, urbanization because they're rural. Oral Valley shares the Amphi Unified School District with Casa Dobis in Northern Pima County. We care about top rated schools. Bell just voted down a continuation of their maintenance and operation override. There's no common ground in any area between urban, suburban, Oral Valley and these distant rural places. So I would ask you to reconsider LD17, it's unrepresentative. Um, Oral Valley should be with LD with communities of interest, Casa Adobe's, Northern Pima County. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a great Friday. Thank you. The next speaker will be Nancy, Nancy Wexler. Nancy, please proceed. Hi, thank you very much. Thank you to the commission for this opportunity and for your service. Competitiveness is the lifeblood of our country and our state. In elections, it gives people a choice to elect representatives who stand for the good of the many. My name is Nancy Wexler. I've stood before this commission before as a longtime Arizonan. Pima County, West Tucson, the current LD and CD3 is my community and I was raised in central Tucson, the current District 10. The draft map 10 is a self-inflicted wound to the heart of our communities. Watching the creation of the legislative draft map was like witnessing a game of twister, contorting LD17 for highly partisan purposes, forcing many other districts to also be much less compact and competitive, has been noted earlier today. While I recognize the task of mapping is complex, earlier test maps such as version nine and those submitted by members of my community, like Barbara Tellman's LD0049, shows the possibility of keeping true communities of interest together and making districts, including 17, fair and competitive. Again, competitiveness does serve us all. It's the power of a democratic republic and the power of an independent commission, which serves to give the voters the right to choose their electors, not the state. The independent commission is a source of pride for Arizona one for which the voters overwhelmingly enacted to ensure everyone is represented. I urge you to uphold this principle and deliver legislative and congressional maps where Arizona's voters decide, not a predetermined bias group of special interests. Thank you very much. Our next speaker will be Mayor Paul Deasy. Mayor Deasy, can you hear us? Thank you, my apologies, I was muted. Um, I would like to thank the Independent Redistricting Commission for the opportunity to speak today and on behalf of the Flagstaff City Council. We are very concerned with the current IRC districting map 10.2 and the council would like to voice its unanimous support for the legislative map submitted by the Co Coconino County Board of Supervisors on October 27, 2021. This preferred legislative map upholds the city of Flagstaff's redistricting values as it keeps the greater Flagstaff area intact and places a city in a district with communities that share similar values. These values include investing in forest health and watershed protection, uh, as well as recognize the positive impact of ecosystems on our communities. We share healthcare resources and water management concerns, host Grand Canyon tourists and promote ecotourism, I have a strong interest in improving our greater economies with investment in infrastructure, shared transportation corridors, and shared workforce development. As you can see, uh, to the south of us, we are cut off at our airport, uh, cut off from our southern Flagstaff greater uh, neighborhoods such as Kachina Village and Mountain Air. Uh, this greater Flagstaff community shops and works in Flagstaff. It's our workforce. Uh, mm -hmm. Residents in the greater Flagstaff community attend Coconino Community College, not Yavapai Community College. It only makes sense for these shared interests of fire prevention, our watershed and water protection, commerce, healthcare resources, workforce development, <laughs> education, and ecotourism to be held together in a combined legislative district. Moreover, District 6 and 7 in the Coconino County Board of Supervisors maps are competitive in nature and would also allow Native American and Hispanic communities to elect candidates of their choosing. Conversely, the IRC's legislative district approved map version 10.0 uh, features very uncompetitive districts that would not uphold the constitutional mandate of competitiveness. Flagstaff City Council urges the commission to strongly consider revising the Northern Arizona portion of the version 10.0 map 
in your future deliberations. Thank you for your tireless efforts to uphold the constitutional requirements of Proposition 106. Thank you. Okay. Our next three speakers will be Aubrey Son Sonderweger, Karen Anietti, and then Marilyn Weissman. Aubrey, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Proceed. Thank you. Um, I know it's been a long day, and I know our focus has been mostly down in the LD17. I'd like to shift our focus up to LD7. Right now, the proposed map, um, I've been a resident of Flagstaff for over 10 years now. Both of my children were born here. Um, I and my family live, work, and engage socially and educationally in our community, which expands beyond the city limits. The principal at my children's elementary school commutes in from parks. I have professional friends in Belmont, Mountaineer, Kachina Village, and Doney Park. These people are in many ways the beating heart of our city and community. I'm very concerned by the draft maps for LD7. The current maps split our community where we all work, shop, send our children to school, receive medical care, and otherwise gather. I feel the current map shows no respect for geographic features, economic and cultural communities, or the constitutional requirements for competitiveness and compactness. I ask that the commission revisit this region and give serious consideration to the maps submitted by the Coconino County Board of Supervisors, which is unanimously, unanimously supported by city councils of Flagstaff and Sedona. Thank you, commissioners, for your time and service on this on these important issues. Thank you. The next speaker is Karen and Yeti. Karen. After Karen is Marilyn Weissman. Marilyn, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. My name is Marilyn Weissman. I'm a 29 year resident of the city of Flagstaff. Thank you for the work you are doing on this difficult task. I have watched some of the deliberations and have been surprised by the small amount of time you have spent discussing the maps in Northern Arizona. I have no idea what the criteria is that you use to decide the defining lines of our legislative and congressional districts. I am in the current LD6. I have written and spoken of the importance of keeping the city of Flagstaff and the communities that depend on it in one legislative district. I have also asked previously that you consider the I-17 corridor that highlights the tourist communities above and right below the Mogollon Rim as part of our community of interest. I have also asked that the Greater Flagstaff area be put in a competitive district that allows the future possibility of electing someone from our growing town. Instead, you have created these even parts of our LD6 and LD7 districts, three new districts, LD5, 6, and 7, that are not politically competitive or defined by communities of interest. For the city of Flagstaff, our competition within your draft district six is now with our native neighbors, a distinct community of interest who I support in their efforts to be able to elect their own representatives without having the possibility of Flagstaff diluting their ability to do so. This is unfair to both the native vote and the city of Flagstaff. I ask you again to create a legislative district that includes all of greater Flagstaff, including the communities of Kachina and Mountaineer, and join us with the communities below the rim lying east of Mingus Mountain and the Verde Valley, Sedona, Camp Verde, Parkdale, and Cottonwood. The map submitted by the Coconino County Board of Supervisors, LDFO 50 and LDFO 51, does just that. It is supported by the city councils of Flagstaff, Sedona, and Clarkdale. Please consider replacing your draft legislative map of Northern Arizona with the submitted one. I was also disappointed to see that your current draft of congressional maps puts Flagstaff and its native neighbors in a new non-competitive District 2 that will primarily reflect the policy priorities and concerns of the people of the Prescott area, very different from our own. Currently, we are represented in Flagstaff by a moderate. This is the result of the district being politically competitive. Districts that are lopsided in one direction, as the new CD2 is, have the effect. Thank you. Our next speaker is Robert Brunig. Robert? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, I just want to reiterate the comments of Mayor Paul Deasy and the previous speaker, Marilyn Weissman. I support the map that was submitted by the Coconino County Board of Supervisors and endorsed by the Flagstaff City Council and the City of Sedona. I'd like to see Flagstaff kept together as a contigu contiguous community. I'd like to see 
the Native American communities of Northern Arizona have more political power. And I certainly do not do not want to see Flagstaff and the city of Prescott included in the same congressional district. Thank you. Thank you. Our next four speakers are Lynn Walsh, Adam Shimoni, Dieter Nick, and John Propster. Lynn, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. I'm a 33-year resident of Cave Creek and have been very active in the community affairs and environmental education. Your proposed LD maps do not reflect enough competitiveness. Out of 30 districts, there are only six that meet your criteria of 7% vote spread. The new LD3 is not at all competitive with a 20% Republican majority and is a far cry from the stated goal of 7% disparity. This is not acceptable. You are again disenfranchising many citizens. It is very important that new districts be competitive in order to mitigate extremism when districts do not reflect balanced political persuasions. The result is that one group ruled by the most extreme points of view has no compulsion to campaign to the whole population. Competitive districts require candidates appeal to broad sections of the population and leads to moderation and vibrant communities. Competitive districts uh, and governing by compromise is healthy for a democracy. The proposed LD3 does not encompass our community centers of interest in Cave Creek and Carefree. We shop, dine, and use specialized services south along the corridor of Cave Creek Road and Tatum Boulevard. Please refer to the proposed map that I will send all the way down to Sunny Slope. Your proposed L LD3 includes Thank you. The next speaker is Adam Shimoni. Adam, are you there? Adam, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to hear all the public comment that you've heard today. I've been on the line the entire day. My name is Adam Shimoni. I'm a city council member up in Flagstaff and was formerly our vice mayor serving for two years. Um, the Flagstaff community expands way beyond our city boundaries and includes areas and communities such as Belmont, Pachina Village, and Mountain Air which are currently being divided off from the city by, by our city boundary of our southern part of our community, as you know. The, R the IRC draft map 10 is uncompetitive and problematic. Uh, the map divides our greater community up by placing a line right our, at our southern border. Uh, the city council has been in discussions with our county leadership and has unanimously supported the county maps that are being presented to you as alternatives. Specifically, county map LD6, LDF050, and LD, county map LD7, LDF051. Um, there obviously is a lot more work to be done on this front before adopting an official map, and we really hope that you take the time to listen to our community's needs and do the job that you all are, are here to perform. The council emphasizes that the values and needs of our indigenous communities as articulated by indigenous peoples and leaders should be strongly considered by the IRC during the redistricting process. Uh, the council would like to voice unanimous support for the map submitted by the county board of supervisors on October 27. The preferred legislative map upholds the city of Flagstaff's redistricting values as it keeps the greater Flagstaff area intact. intact and places the city in a district with communities that share similar values. District six and seven in the Coconeo County Board of Supervisors maps are competitive in nature and would allow Native American and Hispanic communities to elect candidates of their choosings. Conver 
Thank you. The next speaker is Dieter Necht, followed by John Propster Jr., followed by Matt Ryan. Dieter, can you hear us? Okay, we'll move to John Propster. John, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, good afternoon, commissioners. Thanks for hanging in there in this long process. Uh, my name is John Propster. I'm a six year resident of Flagstaff. I'm an active volunteer in several arts and service organizations in the Flagstaff community. I have concerns with the draft legislative district map, particularly as to the mandate to create competitive districts. The draft legislative map creates 13 safe Republican districts, 11 safe Democratic districts, two weak Republican, two weak Democratic, and two competitive districts. I know this is a difficult process trying to make districts competitive, but it seems like to comply, more than six districts should be considered leaning or competitive. I will address the map for LD7 uh, specifically. I'm disappointed that the draft map has produced a non-competitive district. Competition fosters good government rather than extremism. The LD7 map make, makes no sense because it splits many different communities of interest and is not geographically compact. I support the map sub submitted by the Coconino County Board of Supervisors for LD7. This alternative recognizes communities of interest along the I-17 Oak Creek Corridor and keeps the Verde Valley cities of Cornville, Camp Verde, Cottonwood, and Clarkdale together in one district. It makes the district highly competitive. I urge the commission to incorporate the Coconino County Board of Supervisory Districting Plan. Please do not separate Sedona, Cottonwood, and Flagstaff and Northern Arizona First Nations. All of us make up a cohesive community with cultural, educational, and geographic ties to each other, and we should be grouped together. Additionally, as communities that border the First Nations, we best understand their needs and problems and should therefore remain together. Please do not separate us. Thank you, commissioners, for taking on this important time intensive and stressful task in service to the citizens of Arizona as you adjust the draft map to create more competitive districts and less safe ones. Thank you. The next speaker is Matt Ryan. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, Honorable Chair Newberg and members of the commission. Good afternoon, my name is Matt Ryan, Chairman of the Coconino County Board of Supervisors. After much research, deliberation, and consideration of the goals and requirements of Proposition 106, our Board of Supervisors unanimously approved the revision to our originally submitted legislative district map at their October 26th meeting. We submitted the revised maps to the IRC on October 27th. They are LD050, and LD, that's LDF 050 and LDF 051. I come before you today as my colleagues and I are deeply concerned about the draft maps which were approved by the commission last Friday, October 29th. In your deliberation on October 28th and 29th, there was no consideration by the commissioners of our revised map, nor conversation about Northern Arizona as a whole. The revised map we submitted includes the values which we have articulated to the AIRC for the past several months, meeting the constitutional mandates of competitiveness, communities of interest, equal population, geographical compactness, and keeping cities whole. Competitiveness is a significant issue and is reflected in our revised map. Uh, to the importance of competitiveness, allowing citizens to elect candidates of their choice. And based on our research, our data shows that the legislative district we number LD6 is one of the most competitive legislative districts, if not the most competitive, at a deviation of minus 6.33%. That's 49.8%. I think. 2% Democrat and 50.18% Republican. Further, the district we number LD7 meets the goals of Native American communities to have minority majority legislative district. The breakdown is as follows. The deviation is minus 6.73% using the standard VAP. The LD7 VAP of Native Americans is 57.9%, which would allow members of our Native American communities to elect candidate of their choice. These maps reflect the many comments that were submitted in writing
Thank you. The next speaker is Cynthia Malecki, followed by Nathan Norris, followed by Sally Kladnick. Cynthia, can you hear yes. us? Yes, I can hear you. Please proceed. My name is Cindy, my name is Cindy Malecki, <laughs> and I live at 35th Avenue in Cactus in Phoenix. I've lived here for 40 years. First, I would like to thank the members of the commission for all that you do. Uh, the Sunny Slope area is included in the newly proposed District 2, and it is a very good idea. I have tutored the children at the elementary school and substitute taught at Sunny Slope High School. It is logical to bring the North Mountain communities together and not divide them. Although unique, Sunny Slope has shared values with the rest of the North Mountain community. It helps it make helps our district, district competitive. Competitive districts can result in increased dialogue between elected officials, candidates, and voters. Enhance accountability encourage citizens to run for office and get involved. It also can aid in getting representation for diverse communities whose needs are sometimes minimized. I urge you to continue to consider this when you make your final decision. Again, I thank you for all that you do. Thank you. The next speaker is Nathan Norris. Nathan, can you hear us? Let's go to Sally Kladnick and then we'll come back to Nathan Norris. Sally, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. And thank you, Commission, for finally getting to hear some voices from Northern Arizona. It's been a very long day. I have been a resident of Flagstaff for 18 and a half years, and I am currently in CD1 and LD7. CD1 has been working for us. It's competitive, and we have a moderate representative. LD7, which does not accurately re reflect communities of interest, it's a perfect example of gerrymandering. It packs Republican voters giving them a 30 point advantage. And to do so creates a district that's unnecessarily hard to travel and which ignores one of the most significant economic drivers of the Arizona economy, which is tourism in the corridor between the South Rim of the Grand Canyon and Verde Valley. I urge you to look at the Coconino County Board of Supervisors submitted maps on October 27th for LD6 and LD7, which are fairer, more competitive, more contiguous, and better reflect communities of interest. Thank you. Thank you. And it looks like Nathan Norris is back. And then the next speaker is Jordan Greenslade. Nathan? Hello, I'm Nathan Norris, resident of Oro Valley, Arizona in proposed LD-17, bringing that up again. I want to share my concerns about the next 10 years. Do you hear that? The next 10 years. 10.0, uh, formerly 9.2 map, does not lead to equal competition among parties. The, in, in the proposed version 9.0, creating uh, the community, adding the communities of Marana, Oro Valley, Saddlebrook area, Casas Adobes, this district, district makes very competitive with barely a one point spread between Democrats and Republicans. This brings the, uh, the independents into play. Statewide, there were 30 legislative districts that were divided into 12 safe districts, each with Democrats and Republicans equally, and 
six competitive districts. We need to bring for, forward candidates who will also appeal to the independents in our, in our state. So again, the version 9.0, which is, was proposed uh, in Southern Arizona, covers the areas that, uh, that uh, I spoke of and are independently uh, vetted. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. The next speaker is Jordan Greenslade, followed by Eric Kramer, and then Wendy Maldonado. Jordan, can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, so thanks everyone for your time today. I know it's been a, a long day for the commissioners. Thanks for your hard work. Um, so I live in Phoenix over on Osborne and 28th Street, kind of near the new borders of LD1 and 4. I just wanted to say that I really agree with how these lines are drawn. I think um, some of those like East Camelback, Arcadia neighbor, neighborhoods, um, just stay with like South Scottsdale in that area. It really makes sense as a community of interest and also works to make the district a lot more competitive, which, you know, I, I think it's just something that, you know, we've heard a lot today about the, the benefits of competitiveness. And I really think it brings out the, the best in the state, makes it so that uh, makes it so that elected officials actually have to fight for people's votes, and it makes it so that any community can't be taken for granted because every vote matters. So, I just want the commission to really keep that in mind, and I want to thank you for your time, and have a, a wonderful weekend. Thank you. The next speaker is Eric Kramer. Eric, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Please proceed. I'm here today to ask the commission to create competitive legislative districts in Northeast Arizona. The current plan disenfranchises 320,000 people, either because they are in districts where their votes are not needed to win, or they're in districts where they could not possibly win. It's a huge number of people. A few people have asked where this very strange new District 7 comes from. Um, it's an attempt to revive the political career of Sylvia Allen. She's out barnstorming around the state. Not a worthy goal for the commission to, to accomplish that. The current maps badly fragment Flagstaff. It was it looks like some glass object was hurled at Northern Arizona from outer space. It's just all over the place. What's in the Flagstaff district and not what's not. There are two forms of two tools used in gerrymandering gerrymandering one dividing a minority group and the other one packing them um, as far as the natives in north northeastern arizona we are currently not dividing them but we are packing them um, and this reduces their political power we can say oh good we've got native representatives but when they get to phoenix they're not even allowed in the room when the budget is being considered. Um, you can't really bring home the bacon if you don't get to get in the room where the bacon's being carved up. Um, competitive districts would give them more political power and more fully allow our natives to participate in the politics of Arizona. Thank you for your hard work. Um, the congressional district, I think without part of Yavapai County, west of the Mingus Mountains, I think is good for, for Northern Arizona. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Linda Johnson. Linda, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Perfect. I live in the village of a Creek, otherwise known as VOC. I support the maps proposed by the Coconino Board of Supervisors submitted on October the 26th, known as LDF, 0050 and LDF 0051 and endorsed by the Sedona City Council in their letter of October 27. Both of these organizations and their proposed maps support the importance of our communities of interest and keeping them whole and encourage competitive legislative districts. As an engaged citizen, I am distressed by your proposed maps. You have managed to break in half a small town like Sedona and separated the Coconino County part of our city from not only the rest of Sedona, but from the region of the Verde Valley, our community of interest. You have placed us in areas where our ability to express our concerns will be significantly reduced 
and ignored because we have no common interests. As a VOC resident, I shop and dine in Sedona, Cottonwood, and Flagstaff. My husband's medical treatments take place in Sedona, Cottonwood, and Flagstaff. We are part of a significant ecological environment that is critical to our future. Our tourist economies are critically important to all of us in the Verde Valley and Arizona. And to top this off, we are a very competitive, competitive uh, political environment. I cannot imagine why you would want to break this up. I can't help but notice, as I've heard this morning and this afternoon, that many of your maps heavily favor one political party over another. This is a ticket for disaster. I lived in such an area for 46 years and witnessed the steady de deterioration of political engagement by its citizenry, the increase in political extremism and rampant corruption. I know you do not want this for our wonderful state. Your current map for Northern Arizona does not reflect a competitive district and opens the door for an environment slimmer, similar to the one I left behind. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Janine Reno is next. Janine, are you there? All right, we'll go to Judy Doloff. Judy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Please proceed. Uh, hello, my name is Judy Dolliff. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I also live in the community of the village of Oak Creek. And uh, I, for one, am appalled at how it appears as though you've gerrymandered this district. Why on earth would you split up a small town like Sedona into two separate congressional districts? It makes no sense. It makes it so that we can't speak as one voice in our community and address the issues that are important to us. You've uh, put my community in a district with Prescott, Arizona, which I believe we have nothing in common with. Prescott seems to be worried about having more and more development, and we in the Sedona area are trying to restrict development and keep our uh, community uh, in tune with nature and not have so much development. I urge you to uh, to uh, adopt the maps that the Coconino Board of Supervisors have adopted. That would be 0051 and 0050. Please keep this community together. Our community of interest has much more in common with Flagstaff, the Verde Valley, Cottonwood, than it does with the communities of Payson and Prescott. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. The next speaker is Austin Aslan. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Austin Aslan. I'm a Flagstaff City Council member. I'm also the chair of the Coconino Plateau Water Advisory Council, which is a large and diverse body of water stakeholders and experts up here in Northern Arizona. I want to thank you all very much for your service and the hard work you're, you're doing. <clears throat> um, I want to implore, implore you not to put Prescott and Flagstaff in the same congressional district. I grew up in Prescott and I'm now a longtime resident of Flagstaff. I love both both communities, but from my personal experience, Prescott and Flagstaff are entirely incompatible and would present enormous challenges for any congressperson constantly trying to reconcile vastly opposing issues and values. This is particularly true from a water perspective. As you may know, Prescott is ruled by a groundwater active management district. Flagstaff is not. This alone is incredibly significant. You're hearing uh, this afternoon from a number of Flagstaff City reps. We are a diverse body, but we have come to the unanimous conclusion that the LD and congressional maps drawn by the Coconino County Board of Soups makes the most sense. But I'd like to use my time here to say something to you personally. Um, here's the reality, so important today. Uh, making incredibly strong partisan districts creates a cognitive dissonance between what local constituents are asking for and what far off political powers dictate. We run the very real risk of encouraging extremism when our party primaries decide elections before general elections even happen. This country is tearing itself apart right now. We need to be mindful and thoughtful about creating districts that create an opportunity for healing and actual dialogue. It's not gonna happen in front of the television cab cable news channels. It's not gonna happen unless our politicians are forced to wrestle with the nuances and the overlaps that exist in our politics. You guys are at the front lines of this. You have a hard job. I know what it's like to have non-binary choices resolved into black and white vote at the end of the day, but this is not hard. Prescott and Flagstaff should not be in the same congressional district and the Flagstaff region should remain whole. Please follow the recommendation put forth by the Coconino County Board of Supervisors. 
Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Phyllis Smith. Phyllis, can you hear us? Uh, I Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, please, please proceed. Thank you. Well, thank all of you for still being here today and um, for everything that you're doing, uh, and especially for the opportunity um, that I have to speak with you. My name is Phyllis Smith, and I live in Cave Creek. Um, LD3, the current LD3 in the new draft maps, includes Cave Creek, um, but it has a 20% spread between the political parties. This does not fall within the 7% spread for competitiveness that was adopted by the commission. Currently, only two LDs in Maricopa County fall within the 7% spread for competitiveness. The remaining 18 districts favor a single party and have spreads greater than the 7% adopted by the commission. I encourage the commission to take the time to recreate maps in Maricopa County and actually all of Arizona so that they may meet the 7% spread as adopted. Doing so would meet the nonpartisan voter approved Proposition 106, which mandated fair and competitive maps. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Alexander Rosado. Alexander, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please. Perfect. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Alex Rosado. I live in the Arcadia neighborhood right at the border of what the new legislative district uh, four in the draft maps, uh, right off of 48th Street and Thomas Road. And uh, what I'm seeing is like I am right at the border and I am somebody who um, enjoys this Arcadia area neighborhood. I go up to the Roadrunner Farmer's Market I go on the hiking trails on the mountains, and it's just um, troubling to see that if the proposals the proposals will come through, that I will be cut out of this district of the and be pushed into a more heavily democratic district, and then the district I've been part of will become more heavily leaning Republican. And I think we heard from other speakers that right now we're in a political climate that we should not be drawing maps based on political parties. We should be drawing more mixed and more inclusive districts so we can continue to have real conversations amongst the community because without healthy dialogue amongst us, our neighbors, how are we supposed to uh, continue to move forward and turn a heel? And I just want to make sure that I continue to stay in district four. I love this area and I wanna to continue to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is going to be Bruce Donaldson, followed by Janine Reno. Bruce, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay. Hi. My name is Bruce Donaldson, and I live on Toho Trail, Kachina Village, which is a district of Flagstaff. So I get my mail in Flagstaff. Uh, the local schools are all in Flagstaff, the library, the Saturday market, shopping, uh, art walk, medical, I'm two miles from the airport, and somehow I have been, and my whole community has been placed in uh, Legislative District 7, uh, which has nothing in common uh, with Flagstaff, even though I never leave basically district six, except for the mile that I've, that my neighborhood has been placed within district seven. So I support the uh, map drawn and endorsed by the Coconino County Supervisors. And I would like to um, also mention that in addition to Kachina Village, Mount Air and Lunds Park are essentially parts of Flagstaff. And some of the rest of the folks. Thank you. The next speaker is Janine Reno. Janine, can you hear us? Janine, can you hear us? The next speaker is Linda Guarino. Linda, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. 
My name is Linda Garino, and I live in Doney Park, which is part of the greater Flagstaff area. We were previously in CD1, which was a highly competitive district, and are now in the proposed CD2, which leans heavily Republican. This is unfair to all Democrats and moderate independents because there is no reason for us to vote in a district that would have gone Republican in the last nine elections. It also takes away my right to representation in Congress because a Republican who's sure to win would have no reason to listen to concerns from the other party. A proposed revision submitted by the Navajo Nation is competitive while honoring the other five criteria for independent redistricting, and I urge you to adopt this map. I have the same concerns with the proposed legislative map because Northern Arizona is split into two highly non-competitive districts, LD6 with a 42% vote spread and seven with 30% vote spread. Each, each district should be competitive so that every voter can have an equal chance to elect legislators who will listen to all of their constituents and not just their base. Politics in Arizona are already too partisan, and these so-called safe districts will make that situation worse by allowing extremists to win on both sides. Please consider the alternative map for LD6 and 7 submitted by the Coconino County Board of Supervisors, which makes each district highly competitive while honoring the other five criteria for independent redistricting. These districts proposed by the County Board of Supervisors would encourage moderate candidates to run for office and would permit elected officials to compromise. I ask you to please adopt this map. Thank you for listening and thank you for your service. The next uh, speaker is Lena Fowler. Lena, can you hear us? Is Dolly out here? Is Dolly out here? We'll come back to Lena. Uh, the next speaker after that is Sandy Moriarty. Sandy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. And good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Hi, I'm Sandy I'm Moriarty, Moriarty, the mayor of Sedona. If communities of interest truly matter, we're wondering why the current maps adopted split the city of Sedona and split the Verde Valley, which includes Sedona, and in addition, split Sedona from Flagstaff. Sedona, Flagstaff, and the rest of the Verde Valley work together as a region regularly and depend on the partnerships we have among us. We have much in common with each other, and we have very little in common with the other areas we're combined with according to your current draft maps. We strongly support the map submitted by Coconino County, which meets all of your criteria, not just communities of interest, but competitiveness, equal population and compactness. Splitting our city of fewer than 10,000 and splitting our region makes no sense to us. It appears that our previous comments, which also align with the Coconino County draft map, were not really taken into consideration. We're struggling to understand why our small city, as well as our region, which has been working together well for many years, we believe more than any other region in the state is being split in many ways. We share so many interests and it only makes sense that we share our legislative representatives who can then advocate for us based on our commonalities. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be Lena Fowler. Lena? Hey, Lena okay. Fowler. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, I am Lena Fowler, the vice chair of the Coconino County Board of Supervisors. Thank, Thank you, you so much for this opportunity to provide an input and provide and provide feedback on both the legislative and congressional redistricting process. It is important to devote our attention and focus on the process to um, that will 
be with us for the next 10 years. And we thank you for your service in this process. Coconino County submitted a map, the CD0016 and LD0013 on September 29th. Um, I'm just really hoping that you all looked at it because from the map that you have have adopted or have um, it, you're showing it just is not um, competitive at all, our map is. So shortly after um, we submitted these two maps, um, we discovered that we had an oversight and we, we did not include um, um, Hualapai and, and Kaibat Paiute tribe in CD6 and CD2. So we immediately had a correction and submitted the um, another that corrected map again. After that, we reached out to our communities, to the local communities. We met with tribes. We met with the our local communities, and all of them have really been um, really got engaged into a conversation about this redistricting, and really have um, have gotten an interest in the map and also in um, organizations throughout the state. We met with them, <coughs> excuse me. And so we've been really, um, really paying attention to what people have been telling us. So then we went back again, we revised the maps again and specifically the legislative redistricting um, maps number, their numbers are LDFO51 and LDFO50, which addresses mapping scenarios. Thank you. The next speaker is Janine Reno, followed by Julie Penzola, followed by Kathy Rutherford, followed by Dieter Necht. Janine, can you hear us? Thank you. The next speaker is Janine Reno, followed by Julie Penzola, followed by Kathy Rutherford followed by Dieter Necht. Janine, can you hear us? Janine Reno, can you hear us? The next speaker is Julie Pinzola. Julie, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Commissioners, thank you for listening today. I'm Julie Penzola, retired city planner and 28 year resident of Yavapai County. I'm here appealing to your sense of professionalism and accountability. You have discounted repeated requests for competitiveness and the COI testimony from much of Northern Arizona, choosing instead to keep an intact Yavapai County for LD5. Conversely, draft map LD7 breaks up Coconino, Apache and Navajo counties, Flagstaff and Sedona, and creates overpacked, non-competitive LDs 5, 6, and 7. Ignoring the legitimacy of the Verde Valley community of interest and its alignment with Flagstaff is the problem. LD7 does not achieve compactness, splitting five counties in order to keep Yavapai County whole. Map uh, LDF 50 endorsed by the Coconino County Board of Supervisors, Cities of Flag and Sedona, draws an LD7 that splits only four counties, and has real competitiveness at 50-50 instead of 36-64. This shows you can meet the competitiveness criteria along with other criteria. For adjacent LD6, the Coconino County map fixes the problem of overpacking 71% of Democrats into LD6 and makes it much more competitive. It includes an intact flag staff and keeps both Navajo and Apache counties whole and is more compact. Last, the Navajo Nation has submitted its preferred uh, CD map, which is way more competitive than your CD2 draft. It keeps all the native lands together as a comprehensive COI. It creates a counterbalance to the very conservative CD9 to the west, which should also include central Yavapai County as it does today. Citizens want competitive districts and a purple state. Please study these submitted maps and make the changes needed to meet your obligation to honor all six criteria as consistently and fairly as possible. Thank you. Sincerely, thank you very much. Please study these submitted maps and make the changes needed to meet your obligations. The next speaker is Kathy Rutherford. 
Kathy, can you hear us? Thank yes, you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay, my name is Kathy Rutherford and I live in Sedona. I am here to speak for the mapping considerations for Northern Arizona. A chance to elect a like-minded representative is critical for participation in our democracy. Competitive mat competitiveness matters in these maps. The current draft map for LV7 is not competitive. The existing draft maps do not give me a chance, even a chance, an opportunity to elect a like-minded representative. They do not even include me in my community of interest. The map, in fact, splits me apart from neighbors across the road from where I live. I live in the Coconino part of Sedona, and it makes no sense, absolutely no sense, to split our city along county lines. By focusing on trying to keep Yavapai County whole, a very diverse and large county, you have, in fact, totally ignored communities of interest, geographic boundaries, and most importantly, have taken the previously competitive district of LV6 and made one that will only ever be represented by one party. The previous LV6 also puts Sedona and the rest of the Verde Valley in the community of interest with Flagstaff. You've already heard all the reasons why that should happen. And please, please listen to those reasons because they make sense. The problems that I have mentioned above can be solved by using the suggestions that are incorporated in the maps that were put forward by Coconino County Board of Supervisors. These maps support a community of interest that is reasonable and logical. It also creates a competitive district, both for the LD and the CD, that um, and that should not be the last factor taken into account. That should be a priority factor. Please, please take all this into consideration. And thank you so much for listening to my concerns today. Last factor taken into account. Thank you. The next speaker is Dieter Necht, followed by Ellen Faria, followed by Ann Heitland, followed by Toby Friedman, followed by Holly Plunk. Dieter Necht. Okay, we'll move to the next speaker, Ellen Ferreria. Ellen, Ferreria. can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay. Thank you. I have lived in Sedona for eight years and plan to spend the rest of my life living here. I support the map submitted by the Coconino okay. County Board of Supervisors. That map is competitive, compact, and recognizes communities of interest. I hope that the commission will listen seriously to the testimony we're hearing now from Northern Arizona, including that of the mayors of Flagstaff and Sedona. Sedona is a tiny town with fewer than 10,000 people. It's like an island, but instead of being surrounded by water, we're surrounded by Coconino National Forest and mountains. It is a community of interest by itself and can easily be paired with the Verde Valley and Flagstaff. There are only three routes in and out of our town. They lead to Flagstaff in the Grand Canyon, Cottonwood, and I-17 in the Verde Valley. We're a tourist corridor and share many interests with other parts of our region. We are a close-knit community and face unique issues as some of Arizona's busiest tourist towns. We have nothing in common with Payson or Prescott. The current maps have our tiny town divided by county lines, which makes no sense when it's applied to voting. The county lines were not drawn to be voting blocks. By splitting our town in two arbitrarily by county, our voice and voting power is completely diluted. Two congressional representatives and six legislative representatives will have no reason to listen to the concerns of one half of a small town. Neither congressional nor legislative districts are don, drawn here to be competitive. It will be nearly impossible to find independent or democratic candidates to run because there is almost zero chance that they'll win their races. So there goes democracy. Please do not split Sedona or the Verde Valley. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Dieter Necht. There goes democracy. Meeting. Hello, hello, hello. Mr. Necht, we can hear you. Please proceed. Hello. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm sorry. Proceed. Thank you. Um, Meeting. Hello. hello. I appreciate. Uh, Mr. Mr. Necht, can you turn down your? Oh, can, can you, you hear turn me? Down your, 
answer. Yes. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the commission sitting through this long session as well as their work uh, for the whole year. Um, I, I also uh, waited uh, since 10 o'clock um, to try to give some comments and the people uh, that spoke before me did, did such a, a wonderful uh, job of, uh, of, of what I, I have to say uh, that I support uh, keeping Sedona in one piece. Uh, it, it will be, uh, I have tried to, um, to participate with the state government in the past, but I, I can just imagine uh, the laughter I'll get when I try to call my representative um, from the split. I feel part of uh, Sedona, uh, Verde Valley, Cottonwood, and Flagstaff. And I feel like we all have the same interests. You can make this a lot more competitive if you keep us together. Um, the other speakers have given you a lot more of the uh, specific details, which I support wholly. Um, so thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. The next speaker is Mary Lynham, followed by Ann Heitland, followed by Toby Friedman, followed by Holly Pluke. Mary. Mary Lynn. Okay, let's move to Ann Heitland. Ann. I've just sent you a request to unmute. Can you unmute yourself? Hello, my name is Ann Heitland. I've lived in Coconino County near Flagstaff for 26 years. Thank you, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair and commissioners for your hard work. Our nation is at a tipping point unlike any place we've been since the Civil War. We need the best representatives in Congress and the legislature that we can get. And the way for you as the commission to foster this is to make each district as competitive as possible. When elected officials are in safe districts, they don't need to respond to most of their constituents. They need to appeal only to those few voters who vote in the primary election of their party. And the way things stand now those are extremists. You have the opportunity to make competitive districts in Northern Arizona at the same, and at the same time honor the weight of testimony for community of interest between the South Rim of the Grand Canyon and the Verde Valley. I'm concerned that during the draft map deliberations, Chairwoman Newberg uh, recalled a woman in Sholo who was pushing maps with an uncompetitive district like D7. That woman is a former and wannabe state senator who stated in the Arizona Senate that the Grand Canyon is 6,000 years old and used that as an excuse not to enact important conservation legislation. We can't afford that kind of representation in the 21st century. I ask you to ignore her pleas and that of the small group of her followers who took over the limited space available in that hearing in Eastern Arizona and ask you instead to honor the weight of testimony in favor of a competitive district encompassing the cities of Flagstaff, Sedona and the Verde Valley. Please read your district seven along the lines of the Coconut. Thank you, the next speaker is Mary Lynn Zanakis. Mary Lynn? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. My name is Lynn Zanakis. I live in the city of Sedona. I am president of the League of Women Voters Northern Arizona and speaking out on behalf of our organization. The League of Women Voters Northern Arizona represents its members in the Verde Valley, Sedona, Flagstaff, and Northern Arizona. 
we're greatly concerned regarding the current maps for LD5, 6, and 7. The city of Sedona has been split into two legislative districts. Neither part of the city is linked to a Flagstaff district. The towns of the Verde Valley have been joined into a district with Prescott and Prescott Valley. The city of Flagstaff has been split as well. We believe in the crosstown community links within the Verde Valley and Flagstaff and the need to retain this area as a community of interest within a single district. It's essential the commission follow the Arizona constitutional mandates of competitiveness, communities of interest, equal population, geographical compactness, and keeping cities whole. The draft legislative district maps break Sedona part as a city and as a blow against the community. Failure to link the Coconino part of Sedona to the Yavapai part of Sedona separates shared services such as government, school, fire, library. Breaking Sedona from Flagstaff with an intervening district fails to support and honor our shared land resources and services. Failure to link the Verde Valley disavows our shared economies and facilities and linking to Prescott across the Mingus Mountain does not make sense to how we shop, access medical facilities, or support our tourist resources. As concerned citizens, we ask the IRC to correct these oversights and ensure communities of interest and competitiveness is maintained. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you. Our next speaker is Toby Friedman. Toby, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please, please proceed. Thank you for allowing people to speak at these hearings. My name is Toby Friedman, and I've been a resident of Sedona for over 20 years. I live in Yavapai County, LD6, CD1, in Northern Arizona. I'm a precinct captain and state committee member. Though these are listening meetings, I feel that you've not heard my voice. On your present maps, you have divided the small city of Sedona, 10,000 strong, into separate legislative districts. You have not honored my community of interest by hearing that all my everyday activities take place in Cottonwood, the Verde Valley, Flagstaff, as well as Sedona. Those cities share hospitals, schools, grocery stores, hiking areas, music venues, shopping areas, the airport, churches, restaurants, and more. In 20 years, I have only been to Prescott about 10 times, and yet you chose to put my city in districts with Prescott. Please look at your maps again, and please take my community of interest into consideration. Sedona, Verde Valley, Flagstaff belong together in a legislative and congressional district. The bill that created your commission mandates that you consider communities of interest, competitiveness, and the Voting Rights Act. The city of the Sedona City Council agrees with my request. Though you have heard Northern Arizona people um, last <laughs> today, and me third from last on the list, I hope that you hear my request. Thank you, Independent Redistricting Committee members. Thank you. The next speaker is Holly Plute. Holly? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Holly Plug, and I'm a member of the Sedona City Council, and you know me because I've testified several times before you, so it's nice to speak with you again. When I testified in Flagstaff on behalf of the city of Sedona, we requested the commission keep our city whole in one legislative district, and we requested to be in the same legislative district with the Verde Valley, a strong and united community of interest, as you heard from our mayor. Unfortunately, the drafts, the draft maps were not changed from the grid maps and they continue to divide our city of under 10,000 people into two legislative districts by county lines. Many of our residents have communicated with you via written comments and testified in person at at least three public hearings advocating and imploring you to keep our city whole, keep us as part of the Verde Valley region and keep our communities of interest intact with the city of Flagstaff as they are today. Instead, we have three districts, LDs five, six, and seven, that are not competitive, do not reflect communities of interest, do not conform to compactness, and frankly, ignore the voices of a rural region of the state. 
In keeping Yavapai County whole in LD5, a county bigger than the states of Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Jersey, you have sacrificed two cities, Flagstaff and Sedona. Our city council voted by a vote of seven to zero, and we're a diverse group to endorse the maps LDF0050 and LDF0051, which was submitted by the Coconino County Board of Supervisors on 1026. These maps keep Sedona and Flagstaff whole, keep us in the Verde Valley community, keep the Yavapai Apache Nation whole, and I think that's really important, um, and create one of the most competitive districts in the state in the proposed LD6. Instead of two districts with variations of up to 30 points, LD5 and LD7 are up to 30 points in favor of one political party. We'd Thank you. That concludes all of the speakers for today. I'll turn it back over to the chairwoman. Okay, well, thank you everyone for this incredibly healthy, constructive dialogue. Um, really incredibly valuable. We're going to move to adjourn. I encourage uh, everybody to please go online and you could submit a map or uh, feedback through texting or words um, at irc.az.gov. Our next business meeting is at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, November 9th. And our next in-person public hearing is at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, November 10th in Yuma and in Flagstaff. That will be available uh, on, I believe, YouTube or uh, on our link through our website. At this point, I adjourn the meeting. Thank you, staff. Thank you, colleagues and public uh, for an incredible day. Have a great evening. Go Suns.